significant blow for Ukraine? Um, so, so Bakhmut is a very confusing uh, kind of area. I, I want to make it quick so, I can get, so we can get on Thanks, to Thanks, uh, man. Yeah, Because yeah, I, I, I know so, that a lot of, a lot of the audience don't, are not that technical, don't even know where Bakhmut is. That's why I'm trying to keep it a bit broad. But jump in, man. <laughs> uh, uh, of course. So, so ba Bakhmut, um, currently the Russians have the initiative in Bakhmut. Uh, it was originally Wagner forces. It sounds like Wagner's still in the north of Bakhmut, but in the south and in the east, it's primarily Russian regular forces now. So uh, I think that they will probably capture Bakhmut in the next week with uh, the successes that they've had. And why is that? But why? It's why? Just very... maybe for the why the why the hell are we talking about Bakhmut? Why is it so strategically important? So, so Bakhmut isn't necessarily strategically important, but it's very very uh, morale based. Uh, Bakhmut is an area that has been being fought over since the beginning of the war. It, it has been fought over since the initial Russian invasion. This exact city. So. Whoever takes this, or the Ukrainians have held it, but the Russians have been pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing. Um, and whoever takes this, it's going to be a massive morale boost. And it's also, it, it's kind of the uh, the front line. Uh, I'm, try, I'm trying to think of the word, the front line center point for the uh, the Bakhmut and kind of. Uh, Man. So guys, guys, I will, I'll go, I'll, I'll go. I want to go back to China. Just Olsen, Olsen, just one quick about Bakhmut. I'm just, I just Google. I was in Ukraine weeks before the, the. Obviously, I'm not Ukrainian, but I was there before weeks before the war. Been to Odessa, been to Kharkov, Kharkiv, Kharkov, uh, Kiev, and uh, looking at Bakhmut, man, it's just sad. After the war, now whenever you put any most cities in Ukraine in the east, you put any of the cities in Google Images. I wanted to see it before the war. Not one image before the war just dominated. There's nothing left. It's just sad. But I, I want to... It's depressing. Anyone that's listening, just go on Google Images. Write any of the cities in the East. It's it's just nothing but destruction. We saw that in so many countries after war. You know, Syria, for example. I was, I was very close watching that closely. It's just sad, especially when I was there just, just a year and a bit ago. Um, but, uh, Dr. Gokha, I want to ask you the question that I had earlier. Austin, do you mind if I jump to the... Uh, Mario, may, may, may I just... May I just short, shortly comment about Bakhmut because I just returned from Bakhmut uh, day before. Oh wow, shit. Okay, go ahead. Yes, as as I, I witness and running from the battlefield right now. Uh, concerning Bakhmut, uh, the story is very clear. Russia was dreaming to capture Berlin or Paris in 2023, and they still near Bakhmut in 2023. This is it. Yes, there are tough tough fights, there are tremendous ba battles, but regardless story of Bakhmut, R Russia failed. And this is this is what we are talking about right now, that there is no legendary Russia, there is no great myth of, about Russia. They can do nothing with Ukraine, they can do nothing with the free world. And, uh, for example, if Igor or uh, uh, let's say this lady w which uh, interrupted Sebastian wants to come to Bakhmut I'm happy to, to accompany them there and they will, will see with their own eyes what Russians are doing there uh, I want to go to Sebastian um, Sebastian just on China's involvement that was one of the key points I wanted to discuss today uh, and I found to be uh, obviously it caught me by surprise but that's probably I I'm to blame because I wasn't watching it closely um, you, a few speakers said it was expected. Does that is that a serious uh, point of escalation for the war if China does get involved? Do you expect China to get involved militarily by supplying equipment to to Russia? I, I look. They will make money where they can make money, and they will be an embuggerant, uh, to use a technical British term, to America where they can be an embuggerant. But. They are not interested in having you know, either thermonuclear war between East and West, nor are they uh, interested in you know, a protracted land war uh, in, in, in the Eurasian landmass, unless it is controllable and to the detriment of not only America, but to Russia as well. And that's very difficult for Beijing to predict. Um, with regard to the, um, the prior offer, uh, from your, your speaker from Ukraine, Vladimir. Uh, thank you for your information for your invitation. I may I may accept the, the offer. Um, however, with my father and my family's history of being persecuted uh, by communists in Hungary, 
during the Cold War, I am fully aware of what Russians do to people who want to be free. Um, one thing I have to add... If you, by the way, Dr. Goga, if you actually accept the offer, do DM me or no joke, I'll, I'll consider oh, accepting with you. No, I'll, take, I'll, 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 I'll go with you. And, and I'll, I'll take a cameraman and production team and uh, it, we, we'll, we'll, make it, uh, we'll make some news. Look, um, I know you're, 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 you want to know the future. And, and you're very concerned about you know, the possibility for not only escalation, for nuclear escalation. W one thing that really hasn't been discussed is you know, the, the, the secret ingredient here. It's not about counting artillery shells. It's not really as simple as you know, what is the, the tooth-to-tail ratio and the logistics tail of r Russian units. You, know, you, you can see the videos of you know, the trucks with tires that, that haven't been rotated and are literally rotted rubber from the Russian military that has to be dumped by the side of the road. So it's not just the physical aspects. It's not you know, the Marxist economic physical reality. You've got to go back to Clausewitz. It's the will of the people to fight. Uh, an enemy's capacity has to be measured as a, a formula of will plus capacity. It's not just capacity. It's also will. Ukraine has a limitless will to fight. There is nothing you can do to break the will of the Ukrainian people to fight, short of dropping a, a, a strategic nuclear weapon on Kiev. Okay, And even then, I don't know, the, the rest of, of, of Ukraine wouldn't be ready to fight to the death as well. What's the will of Russia? And I don't mean Putin. Putin has the will to fight. But what is the will of the Russian people? When you see the footage of troops, conscripts, NCOs in theater in Ukraine, captured with their body armor uh, opened up, and you see folded over pieces of cardboard inside their body armor, not even steel, not Kevlar, cardboard. That footage isn't just you know, posted by Vox or by you know, the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense. It's posted, it gets back to Russia as well. There's only so much of that footage that can be digested by the mothers, the fathers, the grandparents before it becomes, I know it's not a democracy, but it will become a political liability for the Kremlin or anyone who wants to replace Vladimir Putin after he leaves office. So, you know, th this, you know, the will question is more important than counting the artillery shells and the price of natural gas. And Russia does not have a limitless will to fight. They didn't have it in the Afghan war of 1979, and they don't have it today. So um, I am not that worried with regards to escalation. And right now, I would say, again, anybody who says they can predict the outcome of this war is a liar. Is Putin's grip at risk? Uh, he, he has very successfully in the last 21 years destroyed any nascent uh, organic opposition to him, whether, it, whether it's Khodorkovsky or whether it's any of the, you know, the, the young uh, Russians who've had enough with uh, the, the regime that he's built. So th there, isn't, there isn't an organic capacity to take on Putin. The only thing that is possible is a palace coup, you know, when, when you know, somebody who's inside the machine says, you're a liability to my survival and therefore with, with my buddies in the general staff or uh, the, you know, the, the Ministry of Interior, we're going to take you out. But right now, no, he, he, he can get rid... He's gotten rid of anybody who was a threat, and as you see with the murder of that female uh, officer on on Friday, he's still getting rid of people who get in his way. And uh, can you? Can uh, you I'd really like to jump in. Yeah, just before. Um, that's a yeah, just before you do, yeah. shot, um, uh, and I know that that Patrick as well was, was trying to speak. Um, just Sebastian, uh, I also want want to just give an overview for the audience. Is the alternatives to Putin are not that great either. Some people see Putin. Um, you know, a, a, a coup against Putin could be a solution to this and, and Russia could become an ally of the West some of the alternatives are more <laughs> extreme than Putin, is that correct? Yeah, yeah so, so replacing He's more Putin moderate, uh, from what I understand he's more moderate than, than many of us would expect Yeah so, so Well, moderate, be careful he's, Well, he's, he's, he's a, he's a mur <laughs> murdering bastard but, but you know be, be, be uh, you know, it's it's a it's a pig in a poke. It's it's a it's a mystery toy in a bag that you don't know what the next one's going to be like. So, um, no, look, let's be clear. The, the Russia hasn't changed in terms of a 
a, a political society uh, ever, whether it's the Tsar, whether it's uh, the, the general secretary, or, or, or whether it's the current president. This is a, you know, a nation of strong men uh, and, and, and a nation that likes strong men. So the idea that you turn it into a democracy or representative government because Putin go, goes is, is, is just as fallacious as the neocons trying to believe that they could do that in Iraq or Afghanistan after 9-11. So no, the, the nature of he's a big lefty. I'm not a fan of his politics, but read Timothy Garton Ash's writings on, on Russia in the 1990s. This is a guy who studied in East, uh, East Germany during the Cold War, and, and he nailed it. He said, Russia has always had a, quote, ambivalent relationship to the West. It never wanted, it, it didn't know whether it wanted to be part of the West or outside of the West. It wanted to be inside the tent or outside of the tent, pissing on the tent. I mean, Timothy Garden Ash nailed it. You know, Russia doesn't want to be part of the West, except when it feels it has an inferiority complex. When Yeltsin writes the letter to be part of NATO, you know, very soon it's like, you know, derided as what do you mean? We're, we're be better than the West. This is, this is the Rus. This is the Rodina. This is, you know, Russia. So, so no, the, the idea that it could just become like Switzerland or Belgium is, <laughs> that's not happening in the next 500 years, you know, as far as I'm concerned. And the next guy could be worse. However, the next guy could simply be getting rid of Putin. Why? Because the war has become a liability. You know, the, 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 you know after, you know, your, your, your kids' bank accounts in Cyprus have been, you know, co-opted and, and blocked, once your 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 favorite son can't study anymore in in Cambridge, Massachusetts, for 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 the nomenclatura or the oligarchy, this this becomes unpleasant after a while. At what point do they say, "I want my kid to be driving a Ferrari down the high street of you know Boston, Mass"? Uh, that'll take some time to develop, but it doesn't mean the next guy's better. But it could mean an end to the war, Mario. Right, can I ask I may just jump in on this. Um, just we, I'm just going to ask Pat, yeah. just, just so we get a bit back. Yeah, exactly, so exactly. Good point, point, good point. Yeah. Uh, I was going to do the same. It's been only about an hour from uh, like the pro-Ukraine uh, pro camps. <laughs> um, so, Patrick, I've got a question, and then obviously I know you probably want to answer a lot of the points that have been made. Um, so, my question is this. Um, one of the arguments people make is that the reason why the U.S went out of Afghanistan was so that they can be then use their resources in Ukraine to prolong the war and the reason and within Ukraine obviously there's a significant benefit to the uh, you know uh, military complex and uh, deep state so on and so forth in terms of how much money they're making so if you can answer that question and then I, I, I'm sure you'll want to answer all the points that have been made as well I, I, you could probably make this uh, theoretical argument I suppose uh, what you're talking about in Afghanistan you could you could make it on a number of other uh, places where US forces are stationed where the US has a, a footprint the Middle East is a good example um, so, you know there there is a sort of contingent within the uh, U.S. foreign policy thinking that has all w wanted for a very long time to pursue uh, an offshore balancing strategy, uh, seeing that the current sort of occupying large parts or the Brzezinski uh, doctrine for, you know, uh, dominating Eurasia, for instance, is not sustainable, um, not just economically, but also politically and in terms of how things are changing in the region. So I, I, I don't know if there's much of a debate to have there, but the, the main point is, and uh, to speak to Sebastian Gorka, his point that uh, you can't stop a war when both sides want to fight. Uh, the caveat to that, of course, is and if the person or the party sponsoring one of the parties doesn't want it to end. And the reality is uh, if the United States can no longer uh, subsidize uh, the Ukrainian state to sponsor this conflict in this grand way that it has done, um, then it's over. Um, so there, but at the moment, the problem is there's no political will in Washington or London to stop this uh, sort of creep that we're heading towards right now. So, you know, if, if that changes, and it, and it very likely may change, it might change quicker than many people think. Um, and as I said before, Russia has time on its hands. The United States and Ukraine do not have time on its hands. For, for the U.S. and NATO, this is a giant experiment. They've never tried this before. They're, they're, they're shooting from the hip as much as anybody. And for the United States, there, there's this obsession with uh, getting results, but at the lowest possible cost. Uh, 
uh, they're hoping for some easy way or, you know, the, the idea that Russia will fold because of, you know, images on the TV screens or because of oligarchs' children uh, aren't going to be able to go to the schools or whatever. That's just fanciful thinking. That's not going to determine the outcome of what we're seeing here. What you have in the U.S., though, you see a pattern. It's leading from behind. And they, uh, the, you know, the conservatives, of course, criticized Obama from leading from behind, and that was the Obama doctrine in many different ways. But it was a total failure in Syria. You know, it led from behind 10 years and uh, no results whatsoever, only a destroyed country, a dismembered country. And now they've got 500 troops occupying the oil wells and Deir Ezzor holding on to that, plus sanctioning Syria, hoping they'll break the Assad regime. But uh, it, it's insane to think that this strategy... Um, be able to use push Ukraine into the fray, get them to do everything uh, uh, to serve the geopolitical long-term strategic interests of the Western powers, specifically the U.S., Britain, um, is just ridiculous. But this is the ridiculous thinking that dominates the Washington foreign policy blob. It's total delusionality, and it borders on insanity. I'm not being hyperbolic. Uh, this is exactly what we're seeing right now. Tom, um, I'm going to ask you a bit of a similar question as well, and then um, you've got your hand up, so you can add any points you want to on top of that. Um, so it's the same question. How long can the U.S. continue their involvement, and is it in their interest for this to go on as long as possible based on the fact of the level of financial benefit they're getting in terms of from the military complex as well as gas supplies where they're now becoming the gas suppliers of many people who are no longer – Russia are no longer supplying? I think, um, you know, there's a general idea out there uh, among, uh, I would say, the establishment, for want of a better way of putting it, which includes some, you know, some folks who are very conservative who think it's in the U.S. interest uh, to continue to combat the Russia adventurism here. Uh, so, and I don't see them, as long as there's no significant penalty other than cash, uh, pulling back on that. You know, but going back to you know Mario's kind of question about the Chinese and what they're doing, you know, I agree with Sebastian's analysis. They're gonna, you know, they'll, they'll do what they can without <laughs> causing a conflagration. But you can be sure the Chinese are looking at this very carefully because they're looking at the Western reaction to Russia's attempt to change borders, and they're thinking, well, what's going to happen when we invade Taiwan? If we're going to have the same type of reaction, how will the U.S. react? And if, if I were a U.S. citizen or if I were Taiwanese or any other country subject to China's ire, I'd be worried because the Chinese see a, uh, a West that initially really uh, wanted to do nothing and just presume the Russians would overwhelm uh, their target. And even as the war progressed, and probably could have been ended, in my view, um, or, or accelerated in such a way as to result uh, in a solution uh, that, uh, uh, I don't know if it would have resulted in full Ukrainian control of all of its territory, but a solution uh, much better than we're seeing on the horizon now. Uh, we saw the West and the United States, essentially every time something needed to be done, it was like they, they went back, they went into their pocket, pocket grudgingly and gave them a weapon system or you know a new technology to fight the Russians uh, usually a day late a dollar short and um, in a way that just extends the war as opposed to helps bring it to a conclusion and um, you know if I'm the Chinese I'm, I'm thinking uh, you know that's not the worst outcome if we invade Taiwan uh, to have this sort of half-baked, half-assed approach, pardon my language, uh, to dealing with what's going on in Ukraine. You know, my view is it should be over quickly, and this idea that we uh, uh, spread out and dole out these weapon systems uh, to what end, I don't know, other than, you know, political embarrassment. Each weapon system it results from political pressure as opposed to any strategic analysis. Uh, it's the wrong way to run a war, and, and uh, to me, it's extended it. And and the other big issue that's out there is that, that Biden's corrupt, and he's been on the take from the Ukrainians and the Russians. He's been on the take from the Chinese, and it's all part of the calculus as well. 
and plus he has obvious cognitive difficulties, uh, which is also part of the calculus. So, you know, we're we're the um, what is it, the weak man of whatever, um, and you know, pile on top of that the Chinese balloon attack that went unanswered largely, only after political embarrassment ensued, of course. Uh, we're we're in a terrible strategic position. The United States is because of uh, the Biden administration's fecklessness and um, uh, 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 cautiousness in dealing with these threats. And I think the cautiousness that re re results from Biden's personal corruption, in addition to the sort of anti-Americanism or anti-American power. Um, uh, approach that uh, the liberal left has embraced in the last decade that began in large measure under Obama. Although now that Jimmy Carter unfortunately is very sick, I, I recall how awful he was on that issue as well. Uh, so it has a long, long pedigree. Tom, um, you mentioned uh, China and Taiwan, and obviously we don't want to get into this too much because there's going to be a space on it. But if China was to invade um, Taiwan right now, based on the resources the United States have, would they be able to stop them? I, it, stop is a, is, a, is a loaded word, right? Would the Chinese successfully invade and take over Taiwan? Maybe. Would it, be, would, the ex, would it result in a victory for China in the long run? I don't know. As, as Sebastian said, I don't know how it would turn out. I, I want to... Um, We've we've decimated we've dec we've decimated so much of our military. It, it's hard to tell. So, Tom, I've got a question for you, and I do want to wrap up the space shortly. But uh, the question for you is: Are you concerned? Are you concerned with recent developments? Are you concerned with Biden's speech in in uh, Poland, uh, Russia's uh, Putin's speech, as well as State of the Union address, and uh, the possibility of uh, Xi Jinping going to Moscow? Um, I know we're all bogged down with a lot of local issues in the U.S. that we, we've discussed in previous spaces, but are you following the war, and, and uh, is there concern in Washington? I, I don't think there's any concern about it escalating beyond Ukraine at this point. Um, I, I think it's a mistake, tactical and strategic, to accuse, essentially accuse Putin of war crimes because it makes his... It makes his um, he, it makes the issue of his retaining power one of life or death for him. Uh, you know, it's not a question of him retiring somewhere. You know, it's a question potentially of him, you know, being prosecuted or, or targeted by the West with something worse as a result of accusations like this. It's, you know, he doesn't want to go the way of Gaddafi, and now Biden has suggested that would be the offing uh, after, after his over-the-top speech in that regard. I'd really like to jump in on this, um, if that's okay, because um, uh, there were a few points earlier that I wanted to raise because it kind yeah, of yeah, as you Pietro, it's, a, it's a good point for you to jump in because your uh, best friend Portugal's here as well, so it's going to be interesting. Oh joy, we're going to have a lovely. Um, uh, no, it's fine. Um, I just want to make something very clear, which is that I'm very much anti-war. I'm extremely anti-Putin, but I'm not for the destruction of Russia. Um, and I think that's a completely disastrous thing. So, uh, you know, I try to toe as much of a balanced line as possible, um, but I'm certainly not for the, uh, you know, loss of a country and its sovereign state. Um, but aside from that uh, self-identification, I just wanted to mention, you know, we were talking about Vladimir Putin, right? Um, and I agree a lot with what Sebastian has said on this specific point. Um, Vladimir Putin, and I use this word relative very importantly, because relative in terms of Russia, Putin is not the worst. There was the death of the leader um, of what's known as the um, Liberal Democratic Party, essentially, or the Liberal Democratic Party of the Soviet Union. It was founded by a chap called, um, uh, where is he? Uh, Vladimir Zirinovsky. He died in April of last year, uh, and Putin went to his funeral. Now, Vladimir is, um, or Zirinovsky is even more of an extremist than Putin. Uh, and was a hardcore uh, vocal critic of the war, and that Russia should be doing way more. So the the threat of nuclear he's, he's warfare dead. or the use of correct. Well, he's but there's dead. others but like him. The point I'm making is, yeah, there's others like him who are on the far right of this very distorted Russian political spectrum. So uh, any party that says democratic in the title doesn't actually stand for that. So Putin 
a, a scary man. How, ma how much uh, I mean, how much influence? Speaking. Especially in America. <laughs> how much how, how much influence? How much do they, how much influence do they have got? The extremists. So so the, so there's something called the formal opposition, which is uh, made up of the Communist Party, the LDP, uh, and a couple of others, and they are what make up this coalition of parties that oppose what's called United Russia, which is Putin's party. For, for the audience, uh, keep in mind that Putin is actually elected, supposedly. He's elected in a similar way that the British parliament is, that um, Russia is a semi-presidential republic, which is that you vote for the party, and the leader of the party becomes the leader of the, the presidency and the prime minister, uh, and so on. So, But this a formal opposition is nothing but a, um, a shell. It's a pretend you know, group of parties that agree with Putin's foreign policy and don't actually speak out against it. So uh, Zelenotsky, it was part of the liberal quotation marks Democratic Party, but they're not democratic at all. And they won about two, three percent of the state Duma elections. Uh, I think it was late last year. So uh, th th they're a facade is the word I'm looking for. Uh, the other thing I just wanted to mention, because we haven't actually touched upon it enough, I think, is Putin's speech. Um, when we're talking about the escalation to the escalate point, uh, we talked about the start nuclear treaty, right? Putin has suspended. He could have withdrawn. He could have left it, but he didn't. He suspended it. And subsequently afterwards, the Russians came out and made it very clear that they're not actually going to uh, increase the stockpile. So this is, in terms of rhetoric, severe. It's very serious. We shouldn't treat it as anything but. But in terms of actual policy and shift in what the Russians are doing, nothing's changed. So Putin is again doing this because he wants to illustrate to the West that he's unhappy, he wants to push the limits, but he hasn't actually changed the way that the Russians, the Russians aren't going to start increasing their nuclear stockpile. So that, those are a couple of points I'm making. Uh, and can, Peter, can, I ask you, can, I ask you, can I ask you a question on that? Do, yeah, do you think that Putin's speech based, based on the on the START treaty, specifically on the START treaty, right? Do you think that that was geared towards Russian domestic audience, or do you think that was more geared towards the West? I think it's both. Um, as a strong man, particularly, you have to uh, appeal to both your domestic and foreign policy audiences, right? As an autocrat, you are at the um, risk of being toppled by whoever it is very easily. This is what we see in Turkey or Argentina during the 80s with the Falklands invasion. They did something of a foreign policy entity to garner support with domestic audiences. So uh, I think Putin is doing this for two reasons, or m there's multiple reasons, but two reasons come to mind. One, uh, what does Putin want to do? He wants to make it look to the Russian people that he is standing up to the aggression and um, offensiveness of, of NATO uh, and the West, right? Uh, he wants to make it look that NATO, Biden are the aggressors, and therefore he is going, he's been forced into this position psychologically. Uh, he is saying to his Russian uh, voters and people, I am doing the um, bold thing of standing up to the West. I am standing in the face of, uh, of um, uh, um, you know, American imperialism, American aggression, right? Second, though, he is doing this because he wants to signify to the United States, most obviously um, of all, we are not messing around. I will push you, narratively speaking, but will I follow through with it policy? Not necessarily, but he's in front of thousands of people on the global stage he's got china watching he's got india watching he's got the united states and all the other countries around the world watching including countries that are sympathetic to russia and so he wants to make it look as though Jeff, he was is there, a was there any leader. Jeff, what, was there any hints of de-escalation in any of the speeches made by biden or putin um i wouldn't say it's a case of merely just escalation or de-escalation I, I would look. I would. Di I would dis distinguish between two different things, right? The statesman, the head of the entire country and representative of those people, suppo well, supposedly, right? Uh, and then what's happening at mid-level diplomacy or behind the scenes? So I just given you one example, which is that Putin made the speech. We are suspending. That was, a, was a very good. That was one of my points. It's a start. very, very good point. And then the clarity, yeah. the clarification they made afterwards was a pretty but, but, positive but, thing, but, no? But, well, positive, you could say it's a it's a it's a de-escalative move, or it's a it's a it's a it's a, a, it's a mild from, response. You know, yeah, they scale. could have done more. In yeah, a way. but but yeah, but for the U.S. response, I would just state I would point out this. So after Biden's speech, or at a similar time, Blinken also made some comments, which was stating, you know, the door is always open to conversation. 
the door is always open and we welcome i'm paraphrasing somewhat i welcome the you know the russians to come back to negotiate or start treaty or rejoin us so both sides regardless of what their statesmen are saying are actually you know at a lower level talking about you know continuing to engage at least at the strategic or nuclear level i know this is very technical and nerdy but you have to look at the details to understand the the, the find out the differences here and the last point about china and then i will go on mute is i have always told the line that i do not think china will be interested in russian nuclear armageddon I think that there's a reason, or a few reasons, and this is just speculation on my part, which is that President Xi wants to go to Moscow to talk to Putin about the situation, possibly offer him some kind of material support. Don't know, but I also, t- I think, try and get him to take a little bit of a step back from this nuclear rhetoric. Because at the end of the day, China will not benefit from a global war. They have very little interest in what's happening in Ukraine. Uh, and ultimately, you can talk about whether Russia is the junior partner or the senior partner, but China is still a pragmatic country that looks at things very longer term than Russia does in some ways. Uh, and I just oh. think that President Xi, for everything he's got on his plate, domestic issues and, and Taiwan and so on, needs this headache. Uh, as, we get, so I'll uh, as we get our speakers to wrap up, as Piotr just did, uh, I want to ask the audience, after listening to this um, space and this discussion for the last uh, almost four hours, um, are you more concerned or less concerned? I want to get your take on the war. I, I just want to see whether, um, I don't know whether more people in the audience are concerned about escalations. Do they think that the the war could spread outside Ukraine's borders, or they they're pretty pretty much at ease and and don't think that this could get uh, worse moving forward. So if you can let me know your thoughts in the comments, I want to go through them after the space ends. Otherwise, I do want to give it up to give a, give the mic to our speakers. I want to go to Protocol first. Protocol, I know you, you'll give us your thoughts, and and I'll go to Sebastian next because I know Sebastian will push back really heavily as he gives us his final thoughts. Protocol, what are your thoughts specifically on the war potentially escalating um, after Biden and Putin's speech and um, and Xi Jinping's potential visit to Moscow? Yeah, I think at a minimum it's going to stay the course. You're going to see a, a continued offensive from the Russians. Do you think, do you think, it, could, do you think it could last many years, as Sebastian mentioned earlier? You could, you could prolonged war of five I, I years or so? I think it could. I think I think it's, you know, uh, <clears throat> I don't see an off-ramp, right? They, we basically yeah. have been caught blowing up the Nord Stream pipeline, right? That, that would have been an off-ramp next year if winter was harsh in Europe and they needed it and there was a tiring of both sides losing men and equipment, etc., but that was one of the biggest off-ramps that were cut off. <clears throat> and Russia had talked about potentially building a new gas hub in Turkey. But that's basically dead now after these earthquakes, even if they wanted to build it to supply. Europe has started shifting to its, its natural gas and energy needs. But this whole game starts again next year, and it's going to be competing with Asia. It's going to be competing with Africa, etc., for coal, <clears throat> for natural gas, for other issues. So, yeah, the longer this goes, the more this is going to hurt. People forget the EU has issued hundreds of billions of dollars, both as the EU and its individual member states, and basically subsidies for electric meter. And they uh, basically have price controls throughout their, their entire economy. Uh, this, you know, this year went well, but if winter is bad, next year it's problematic. I mean, I know you're talking about the off-ramp and escalation. I mean, at this point, when has China ever betrayed, uh, or Russia recently, one of their allies, or one of the uh, stooges they prop up? It doesn't happen. We have more of a history of that recently than sadly you know the the sino-russian alliance so i think that i don't see an off-ramp um, we have major issues everybody talks about as if we're at the peak of strength no this war has revealed the rapid pace that both men equipment and munitions get expended uh, we don't have the production capabilities i think we're down to five prime contractors for the department of defense we have had a policy <coughs> of just enough just in time for decades while other countries have taken a policy of stockpiling vital munitions, etc., so when they do need it in a war, they will use it. So that's not even delving into the recruiting issues we have, right? There are major recruiting we as issues in, for the U.S. We as forces. in U.S. Yeah, yeah. We have major issues right now, and uh, you know, a, a two-front war. If China did make a move on Taiwan, but I tend to agree with Pietro there. But who knows? With continued visits, with ratcheting up, you know, at a minimum, you might see a longer blockade then what do we do? If China effectively decides to blockade uh, Taiwan, just hypothetically, 
are, are we going to initiate a, a kinetic offense against them when they're doing the blockade? This is a very touchy issue, and a lot of things are going to play out that people really need to decide. And the only, uh, the only reason why I, I discount a wider conflict is that we are completely dependent on China for this new green tech revolution, whether it's through uh, uh, precious earth uh, elements, <clears throat> you know, rare earth minerals, etc. We're highly dependent on China right now. And it's going to take us five years or more to even build out our, our own supply and processing capabilities. And that's if we completely focus on it now. So, I mean, Japan has been doing a better job, Australia, but the U.S., we are not in a great position when it comes to these things that the entire green economy is going to be built on. The, the West, specifically Europe, is heavily relying on these materials for their advanced weaponry systems. So these, there's a lot of issues here that people are going gung-ho and marching towards that, you know, the, the, the entire global economy is not – is not strong in many places. Yeah, inflation might have tapered down in the U.S., but in a lot of emerging markets, they're still hitting record numbers. We're in a tenuous period geopolitically, and uh, people who are watching this, nobody, if anybody says they know what's going to happen, they're lying. And I think when you're playing, you know, a CeeLo with, with, with a nuclear power, you know, it's a little dangerous. Um, Sebastian, uh, final words for the audience, final thoughts uh, as we wrap up the space, and I appreciate you again for coming on. Your mic isn't working, Sebastian. Sorry. Oh, you're uh, back thank you for that. Um, and I don't think I'm going to give much of a pushback to what we just heard. Um, I'll, I'll be very clear. And if you go to my uh, sub stack, if you go to my Twitter feed, literally, I, as, as I turn on my mic, I, I published my piece. And I, I changed the title of my piece because of the last two hours. And it's uh, the title of the article is Ukraine. It's actually about us. Um, so that's at Sebastian Gorka. I've just, I've just pinned it. I've just for the audience. I've just pinned it above. So uh, Sebastian awesome. tweeted it about a minute ago. But if you go above in the pinned yeah. tweet, you could see it there, uh, and you can see it on and Sebastian's it, uh, profile. And if you read the last paragraph, that that's basically a function of, of this uh, great discussion. So um, Ukraine matters. It matters because another nation has invaded a free and independent nation. We should help them fight for themselves. The way we're doing it isn't the right way as far as I'm concerned, um, but that's for, for another discussion. With, with regards to escalation, I personally am not worried for escalation uh, in the near term because Putin will continue to uh, run the, the uh, former Soviet meat grinder the way it's been run for many wars. The Ukrainians will continue to fight for their freedom and their independence. The West, in a rather haphazard and astrategic fashion, will continue to throw money at the problem and, and Western equipment. Um, and that will be able to maintain the current level of conflict, sadly, for several years to come. Um, if Putin sees his power in danger, he might do something rash that would not involve strategic le level nuclear weapons. It could involve tactical level weapons. That's not a function of the theater commanders doing something that would have to be his decision. China does not want an escalation. It wants to undermine America as much as it can, and it wants to profit from the war, but it doesn't want a massive escalation because, as a previous speaker made, uh, said, made the point, they need us as sadly much as we need them because of the interconnectedness of our economy since Kissinger advised uh, Nixon to, to open to the east. So with the for foreseeable future, the fighting will continue. It may grind to a certain frozen conflict that could be in stasis for many more years to come. I am not afraid of escalation, but I am saddened by the tragedy that will continue to be um, Ukrainians being killed by uh, an invading force from Russia, which is what Russia does. Thanks, Sebastian. I've just... Um I pinned it above again for the audio, so Protocol just pinned stuff. Uh, <laughs> Protocol, I'm just going to keep Sebastian's uh, tweet pinned last just for people to have a look at it. Uh, I want to go to Tom. Tom, any final words for the audience again? Good to have you here as well. And then I will go to, and then uh, we'll go to uh, other speakers, Osin Defender and uh, Volodymyr and, and Joa. Uh, thank you. And, you know, Sebastian, per usual, summed the, everything well up. Uh, and Protocol, I didn't agree with everything he said, but, you know, his, his, uh, his hypotheticals were well, well worth considering. You know, my the concern is, you know, the Ukrainians may have the will, but they have limited manpower. And to continue to fight at such a high 
intensity over a period of time is it's really not sustainable uh so that's that that to me is the x factor uh and secondly the other x factor is the presidential election if trump is elected or a trump-like president is elected uh we could have a very different policy in ukraine that could uh, in my view end the war Agreed. a lot more quickly like, than it would how, otherwise how, end how, under how, a how, democrat how, Tom, administration how what could change uh, escalate, escalating it in terms of military material support in a way that would change it on the ground uh, much more quickly than we're doing now. Or withdraw like he did in Syria and gave it to Russia. But Tom, I mean, I would point out that you, the, 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 uh, the Italian Prime Minister Maloney was in Ukraine just today and she ruled out the likelihood of jets being sent. Uh, you know, the tanks is one thing, but the escalation or next level jets is something that a lot of Western countries are feeling quite unsure about. And so I'm not entirely sure even a change in an administration in the United States. So let, 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 let me just add one thing. Tom, Tom's absolutely right. And, 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 you know, it's very remiss of me not, not to make that point. If President Trump is back in the White House, this, this war could look very, very different very quickly. So let, let's just give you one example. Syria isn't in Europe. Syria isn't a member of NATO. Syria doesn't even have a contiguous border with a NATO nation. When we were in the White House, our president killed almost 300 Wagner mercenaries that were there on Putin's order who carried Russian passports. Putin didn't even give a stinking press conference afterwards because he's afraid of President Trump. So either with a more robust engagement or with a couple of very pointed tweets, uh, the war could be uh, ended rather rapidly uh, if President Trump were back in the White House. If Putin did nothing when we killed 300 Russians in Syria, which no American president has ever done since 1917, uh, this war could, uh, at least the fighting could end very, very quickly if President Trump were in the yeah. White House. Yeah. So, so just, uh, just, to, drew, just, just to close out, just to close Syria. out my point, he withdrew from northern just Syria to close out my point, he gave millions of barrels of oil to Russia. What are you talking about? Yeah, he did kill people. And then he withdrew and gave our pipeline, an American pipeline, to Russia. If I could just finish my point, uh, the difference between the left and I think a Trumpian approach, and I don't mean Trump would necessarily be the president, but a, an alternative approach is the left sees war as a government program, not as something to be won not as something to be won as quickly as possible to save lives. They see it as like social security or transportation project, and you know they, they're willing to fund it forever. And that's not the approach Americans like and support. That's why Trump was successful initially. And uh, I think it's gonna be a very interesting debate over the next two years on how to handle things going but, but forward. But Tom, can I ask you one thing? Because when you look at recent polling, uh, it does show that Republicans uh, don't want to be either uh, overwhelmingly, I think 70%, I'll find the article, either want to have very little involvement or none at all. But our leadership, McConnell, Graham, et cetera, have not uh, reflected what over 50, what over you know 70% of, of conservative voters believe in regards to continuing and escalating, you know, U.S. involvement with this war. You know, yeah, I, know but I, I, I have a, I, you know, I, I'm right trying to what distinguish about? my approach from the establishment approach, which would be something much more substantial oh, and, no, I, I and agree. I'm, I'm not saying you know it's you. just that you know I, it, you know and i think trump or, or someone like trump in the oval office would have a very different approach than you know mcconnell and and, and lindsey graham are just taking what they can get out of the biden administration um would mcconnell or Bi or graham um object to uh, trump uh, moving McCarthy, aggressively been to vocal? because i haven't what? heard anything really from mccarthy either yeah, I, I don't know what McCarthy thinks. You know, with all due respect, I'm not sure what he thinks. But um, he's probably more on the uh, skeptic side, at least politically now. You know, but but I, I don't see any significant objection from Republicans, conservatives, or probably a lot of Democrats, um, you know, at least honest ones, if Trump wanted to move or someone like Trump or maybe even to Biden fixed, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, it has a moment of clarity. Uh, just says we got we got to end this more quickly, and we're going to take the steps to end it more quickly in terms that are desirable. And that's not happening now. Uh, as we wrap up the space, I want to get final words from uh, Patrick Osint, uh, Intel Schizo, and Volodymyr. 
Vladimir. Uh, go ahead, Austin. Any final words for the audience? What you think the uh, um, the next couple of years would look like? Um, not not particularly. Uh, I I really thought we were going to see more from Putin's speech last night. Um, but but I yeah, still it was less. Think it was less. As, I agree really though. I, 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 it's a good point. Less aggressive than I thought as well. Less aggressive than I yeah, thought. And, 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 and Austin Defender just said, I, "I told you, man. I told you you shouldn't have to stay up for it. It wasn't going to be that noteworthy." <laughs> Oh yes, I I'm, warned I'm you. I'm exhausted. But but um, again, I, I tweeted this last night. I feel like the speech last night was more in in tune um, with what we saw on the 21st of last year, the 21st of February last year, which was the speech that Putin gave, where it was he was talking about a lot of domestic issues, and then he also uh, announced that they would be recognizing the DPR and LPR. I still personally feel like we're going to see something big in the next three days. Uh, as an anniversary to the invasion, because a lot of people seem to think last night was the anniversary of the invasion. It wasn't. It was the 24th. The 24th is when the actual invasion began. The 21st was the recognition of the DPR and LPR. The and we haven't, and we haven't seen, and we haven't seen any flex from the Russian side yet. So, um, I think mean, no, we actually, haven't. I, I know, Sin Defender. I think one important thing you tweeted about this, and I think you should share it on the net. I think what was it yesterday you tweeted? Billboards in Moscow were saying uh, Russia has no borders as like kind of this imperialistic that the Russian land is infinite, basically. I th if you can talk about that as well. Yeah, yeah really fast, I'll, I'll go over that. Uh, so there was a couple of billboards that were appearing over the last, like, kind of last few days in Moscow. All black backgrounds that said a bunch of different things. One said, watch and listen, uh, just with the 21st, with the date of February 21st. And then there was another one that was... Um, if I'm translating this correctly, the Russian border ends nowhere. Yeah, which the the, uh, this is a good point, and that, that refers like that. to a quote of uh, Putin. I think a kid asked him, or Putin asked a kid, where does the Russian border end? And then the kid gave some river or something as an answer, and Putin's like, wrong, it ends nowhere, or something along those lines, and that was a few years ago. And then that those banners kind of referred to that quote. Does that imply anything? Is that any hint, or just pure someone from the marketing team decided to put it there? I think it's just more uh, nationalistic kind of sentiment by Putin. I mean, uh, saying the Russian border ends nowhere, the Russian culture, Russian people stretch all over the world. I mean, that's that's like a big nationalist thing. Wow. That's nothing too uh, t too big, in my personal opinion. But I, I do think it was interesting that they were releasing all these billboards for this speech last night that we were expecting was going to be this big kind of warmongery speech kind of pushing for the war and maybe declaration of war and a bunch of other things when we didn't see any of that. In fact, he was I mean, very, I mean, very Listen, mild. listen, we thought, uh, is it fair to say Putin expected the war, I, I want to wrap up the space, so we'll go to any speakers that haven't spoken yet and then wrap it up, but just briefly, wouldn't it, would it be fair, be fair to say that Putin expected the war to end within days? Or since? Uh, I, 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 I do think that he expected it to end Quickly, With not days, sorry, I'll rephrase. Days least. is extreme. That's what I thought. Weeks, let's say weeks or, or a few months, less than six months, less than three months even. Expecting I, I Kiev think, to fall he, pretty he quickly. De okay, did. so considering that a year on and we are where we are and Russia has lost territory, um, and had had attacks on its soil. Correct me if I'm wrong, for, or, or at least not on its soil, but had attacks in Crimea, and we've had the Crimea attack and a few bases. Was there any attacks, drone attacks on bases within Russia or was within? Yeah, they were attacked. Oh, they, they within Russian territory. And yeah, the assassin yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's been okay, the assassination. Putin's daughter? No. Uh, some No, so they, they Dukin's Dukin, daughter was yeah, Dukin. Okay, okay I thought I heard the, Putin. The, yeah, yeah, but there, there has been attacks on Russian military installations in Russia, Russia, yeah. Economic infrastructure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so yeah, Angle so considering is actually their nuclear. So that. considering this OSINT, um would it be in and uh, uh, this is a question for anyone in the audience, not an opinion, but would it be um it just would, it, would you say it's an interesting observation that Russia could have responded significantly more aggressively, considering the position they're in? Is that a fair statement? And and how would you compare to the way they have responded and the speech they have? You know, I, I expected a significantly more extreme or more hawkish speech. Um, what's your quick take on it? And I'll, I want to just wrap it up so very briefly. Uh, of course. Again, I released a, a whole kind of predictions to what I thought we were going to see last night, but we didn't see anything. This was barely a speech about the war. But but again, it's not the anniversary of the invasion yet. 
I, I, we still have three days until that happens, and that, that leaves a lot to open. Again, we, we've seen uh, reports that Russia has begun to move a lot of air assets near the border. They began to move uh, some missile units close to the border with Ukraine as well. So there's clearly something coming. We just don't know when. But I and their, air, their like, air force is 97 percent intact. They haven't really yep. suffered these major losses. So th 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 that is something really, really fast I want to mention. A lot of people seem to confuse the Russian Air Force and the Russian Aerospace Forces. They're completely different. Russian, uh, the Russian aerospace forces, we've seen a little bit uh, launching missiles and stuff into, uh, into Ukraine, and then we've seen like some of their close air support aircraft, like the, uh, the Su-25, uh, but we really have not seen the Russian Air Force get involved, Why? but again, Why? that sounds like what we're going to I think they've been holding it off because I think Putin was a little bit hesitant to kind of escalate this conflict any more than it already has, but again, as we've seen recently... It's pretty clear that he's decided to go all in, which is why. Oh, so, again, so do, last do, night, do you think? Can I ask you one question? So, do you think that he's just going to try to grozny the cities, or he's going to finally cut out all the infrastructure and utilities? I I think he's still trying to target the infrastructure. Uh, we saw what they could do if they wanted to in Mariupol, but I, I don't believe that they're going to do that to every city. I mean, that would just be ridiculous. Well, it would be it would be impractical. And I want to go quickly, Patrick and Joe. I just quick final words to wrap up the space. Uh, Patrick, I'll let you go first, and then we'll go to Joe. And Intel Schizo. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sure. Look, uh, pay attention to the Russian media uh, this week because uh, things are developing somewhat quickly. And s maybe his speech wasn't so hawkish, but there's other things going on behind the scenes, like maybe the fact that uh, Putin attended an emergency meeting of the National Security Council for the Russian Federation, uh, I believe in the last 24 hours, and announced the start of, quote, countermeasures on February 23rd. Uh, and this is just right on the back end of uh, Biden's, you know, statements talking about um, the massive deliveries that the U.S. has scheduled uh, for, for Ukraine. And the Russia also uh, summoned the U.S. ambassador uh, I believe, in Moscow for this. So there's a lot of serious things afoot that are happening, and uh, so things can change very quickly. Um, but you know, my last statement I want to make is I'm, I'm very, uh, uh, let's say, um, happy to see how this conversation has evolved over the course of this space, and uh, I think that's down to uh, the moderators, uh, the people hosting it, and the speakers as well. Um, that sort of evolution, I'd like to see that happen uh, at the policy level, at the Washington level, at the NATO level perhaps in the media in the United States as well. It'd be nice to see that happen. But just remember one thing. Uh, like Putin, hate Putin, whatever, Russia is acting in its own national interests and ultimately in the national interests of its people. Um, the question is, is the United States acting in its own national interest and in the national interests of its people? I believe that's still an open question and a very important Thank one. Thank you, Patrick. Joe, a final quick words before I go to Intel Schizo and then uh, Vladimir to wrap it up. Before we go to alcohol. Yeah, I'm, I've been listening since since the beginning of the space, and just want to say something. A lot of people have been on here for four hours, um, seven to eight thousand people, and I'm sure some people are losing sleep over this. It feels like we're going to nuclear war, and I just kind of want to leave people a little bit at peace. Um, you know, in 2020, we were all going to die because of a, a virus. 21, we were all going to die because of a because of a vaccine, uh, look back at Obama times. Uh, he was creating FEMA camps that were going to imprison all Americans, and he was training his own personal militia in cities. Um, you know, typically when there's a Democrat in office, it's every year there's a different rhetoric of why we're all going to die. Um, when there's a Republican in office, it's typically, you know, Trump likes champagne showers and then he's messing around with porn stars. It's a little bit more entertaining when a Republican's in office and not so stressful. But, you know, right now, Putin himself has said Crimea is the red line. Red line, if he loses Crimea, he becomes weak militarily and it impacts his, his economy as well. It also weakens his um, association to BRICS. He would not be as useful to to India and China and those other countries if he loses the warm water port that he would have um, due to Crimea. And Ukraine and America are not making a move for Crimea right now. And until that happens, don't lose sleep over it. It's not, it, he, there's no threat of a nuclear war 
unless you you go for what Putin's red line is. And it doesn't seem like we're going there right now. It, it doesn't seem like they're making any moves well, for Well, I mean, you, you, you can't forget Iran, point. right? The report, well, 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 the report recently came out they're enriched up to 83% in uranium. So, you know, Israel, the Gulf well, states let's, in Iran let's can pop up. Let's like, tangents, buddy. Come on. Okay, let's, let's go. So, so Intel skits off final words for the audience, and then we'll go to Vladimir to wrap it up and... Uh, Revisit the invite to me and Sebastian to Bakhmut, but go ahead and tell us kids. So good to have you, man. I know you didn't have a chance to speak earlier, but would love your quick thoughts on the matter. Yeah, uh, thank you so much for having me up, even if it was just for a brief moment here. Uh, I'll keep it uh, short and sweet. Um, I guess as a summary of uh, this uh, space today, I, Putin's speech was relatively um, lackluster. Uh, as OSIN Defender was saying, uh, there's a couple more days till the uh, anniversary. There'll probably be some sort of bigger speech then. Uh, is there need to fear that, you know, nukes are going to start flying, you know, tomorrow? No. Uh, we're nowhere near to the same level of tensions as, uh, say, the Cuban Missile Crisis or other near misses during the Cold War. Um, yeah, that's kind of about it, I think, just for... Um, this, I mean, Biden. I haven't fully watched Biden's speech uh, today, so I haven't quite. Fully I found, I found Biden. I'll, 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 that was more speech. meat in Biden's speech than Putin's, surprisingly. At least that's my take. I'm not. Give me. Well, it was about a quarter of the length. <laughs> yeah, <it's, laughs> yeah, yeah. That speak the speed cocktail they give him before speeches mm. it hypes him up. Uh, I want to go to to uh, Vladimir. Vladimir, um, uh, we'd love your final thoughts, man. Being underground, you were in Bakhmut two days ago, correct? Uh, yes, Mario, and uh, I'm very grateful for your invitation to take part in your today's event. It was a really great discussion. And by the way, my uh, and Vladimir, you know, just the invite. Yeah. Oh, you, you, sorry, you're referring to the invitation to the space. I yeah, thought you were talking about the invitation of Bakhmut. Okay. Uh, on that one, just quickly, I uh, uh, I accepted just purely because I wanted to see, uh, you know, the impact of war. It was not a political decision whatsoever for anyone listening, because uh, as you know, I never take political sides. But I haven't been to Ukraine since, since obviously since the war, so that's purely why I, I thought it's a good idea. And if Sebastian accepts, uh, Seba Sebastian, okay? no, he, he un yeah, Seba <laughs> every uh, uh, I'll be there. He, uh, okay, well, Sebastian, <laughs> they got Vladimir. If, if yeah, if Sebastian does go, I'm I'm 100% going because I've never met Sebastian in person. It'll be good good circumstances to meet him. So I'd be definitely in it. We could do a big space from there. But sorry, go ahead. I interrupted you, Vladimir. All right, I'll I'll, I'll bring the gun. Mario, Mario, <laughs> Sounds good, though. Mario, I'm 100% sure that you will be able to organize this, the uh, same successful tour to uh, Bakhmut as well as you organize this event. And definitely, if you are ready to come, I would be happy to help you with uh, all possibilities. Just, remi uh, just re to remind you that it's war. I understand. So I've, it's I've been kind I've of been pleasure. No, 100%. Yeah. I've been I've been in war-torn countries in the past and understand the the, the, the ugliness of war. Uh, so say yeah, thanks for pointing it out. Just 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 to. Just to sum up, I, I, I really enjoyed our discussion, you know, and in my opinion, one of the biggest advantage of democracy is that you can talk to people and you can agree or disagree, but you can still voice your ideas. Uh, in tyranny, it's, it's impossible. And actually, I took weapon in my hands with that thought that I don't want my children to be ruined uh, by some Putin who will send them uh, to prison by criticizing him or any other Tsar. And uh, forget about Ukraine. Just think, are you ready to accept that any country invade another? And next day you wake up in the world when the world is divided between China and United States, China and India, and United States are out. I don't think it's a good future for us. I don't think it's a good future for democracy because you cannot protect yourself with a great wall. If democracy protects, protects itself with a great wall, it falls down. It's a history. It's not. It's not uh, just fa fairy tale. And the last thing I would like to mention: uh, I cannot advocate for who is better, Trump or Biden. It's up to United uh, States citizens. I met both of them, and I would say that Biden is great, and he is the most prepared president for United States. Thank you. Thanks, Vladimir. I know that will open up a whole can of worms. Protocol done. Unmute. Um, I do want to go to, um, uh, again, thanks for the invite to Bakhmut, Vladimir, and I, I, as you can see, I'm, I'm actually taking it seriously. Um, I yeah. do want to go to uh, to uh, our co-host, Ian, who came in late. He probably slept in today. All sorts of slime to give us their final oh, yes, thoughts. I did. 
on the yes, discussion. I did. Ian, Ian, did you did you listen to Putin and um, Biden's speeches at all? Uh, yeah, yeah, I listened to, to both of their speeches. You know, it's like night and day. Uh, you can say what you will about the man, say what you will about Putin, but the man is eloquent. And say what you will about Biden, but the man stammers a lot, and he doesn't know what he's talking about. And what do you think about uh, what do you think about the the, uh, the, the, the 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 what was said, what, the, the, what, what they were reading out, rather than right. the way okay, that it was so said? Do you, anything interesting? Any you know, is it yeah. worse? Than you? No, Olsen, Olsen Defender did mention that he he made a few predictions, which were a lot more hawkish, at least from Putin, and none of them came to light, which is a good thing. Um, yep. So, what's your take? So I was, um, well, frankly, um, pleasantly surprised by Putin's speech, right? I was expecting, like, most people are hyping it up as this, oh, he's going to uh, escalate the war, he's going to talk about mobilizing, he's going to actually declare war instead of, you know, holding the special military operation. But he didn't do any of that. He talked mostly about, uh, you know, his long-term view uh, about, you know, Russia versus the West and how he doesn't see this as a war w uh, with Ukraine, but necessarily, but uh, with Ukraine as a proxy, right? That's how he sees it. Um, uh, a few of his remarks stood out. Uh, one of which was, which is on actually, it's actually on my timeline. I think it's got a million views now. Uh, were his remarks about the culture, right? The culture war, and how you know Russia is uh, conservative and the West is kind of losing itself. You know, and it's hard to disagree with what he's saying there, especially when you have uh, you know American politicians on the other side talking about trans and kids and, and, you know, diversity, equity, inclusivity, all this crap, the stuff that, you know, normal people don't care about, right? This is stuff that only the laptop class Americans care about, people who have way too much money and way too much time on their hands and way too, who are way too online care about. So that was the, you know, that's what stood out for me with Putin's speech. I mean, he talked a lot about local stuff, which, uh, you know, I think a lot of people were expecting him to only go on about uh, this, uh, this thing in Ukraine. But instead, he you know he, he uh, talked about uh, local construction jobs. He talked about local uh, industrial uh, issues, right? Things that are, are interesting to Russians, not necessarily to much of the world, but you know stuff that everyday Russians can listen to and be like, oh, okay, so that's what's happening. That's interesting to me. Whereas Biden, you know, um, in his speech, when, you know, in Poland, like the one in Poland, all he did was you know spout rhetoric. You know, dishonest rhetoric about oh we're fighting for freedom and democracy blah 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 it's like it's the same speech he's given for the past I don't know year right it's the same thing empty platitudes no promises even to Ukraine I mean if you you know if you support Ukraine you'd maybe want to hear okay we're we're doing this we're sending you know we're sending Putin a message we're going to do something uh, that that they're you know we're, we're going to make sure that they don't do a no-fly zone or maybe we're going to give long-range ATACMS missiles to Ukraine, you know, we're going to make sure that we're doing something, you know, like some hard promise, something that perhaps, you know, the world could have used uh, before the conflict started, right? They could have said, hey, you know, if you do this right now, we will immediately sanction you, uh, but n n n none of that. It's just empty platitudes, just empty nonsense, you know, a lot of, uh, uh, oh, we're fighting for democracy and we're going to fight to the last man. What does that even mean? What does that even mean, right? You're not giving Russia an off ramp. And you're not giving Ukraine any real sort of promises. It's just empty political nonsense. So that was my impression of the two speeches. And and as a, as usual, you know, Biden stammers his way through the whole thing. So it sounds like a joke, but he has no idea what he's talking about. So yeah. Cool. Um, before anyone un uh, anyone unmutes and debates this, appreciate your thoughts, Ian Slyman, and all sorts. Thanks for helping moderate the space. Um, uh, Slyman, do you want to give us your thoughts on the uh, discussion so far and um, uh, your thoughts on the war, man? And then we'll go to all yeah. sorts to wrap it up for the audience. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to um, summarize um, my thoughts because I was trying to be as balanced as possible being a co-host. So I'll start at the end and then go to the beginning. So I agree with someone who mentioned that actually if Trump was in charge, this war would have ended a lot sooner. I don't think it's that hard to end the war. And we can just look at it historically and see what the situation is. So you had a scenario where the Minsk agreement was entered into in bad faith. And so, and Merkel ex uh, stated this, and so did Chirac, that this was done to allow a situation where they can arm Ukraine and be able to get in a situation where they can basically fight back against Russia. Then you have a scenario where the regions, the annexed regions, as well as the separate separatists, Ukraine want to hold on to them. Again, that's not a very difficult situation. You can basically give them an opportunity, which is because remember, most of that region is largely Russian. 
you can give them an opportunity to vote you can have the vote overthrown, overthrown by the UN as well as Russia in a joint collaboration so that there's no um, uh, claims of uh, fake voting and so on and so forth and then when you look at it I mean Putin was very clear very early on that look these are my demands and his demands weren't that far-fetched you know Ukraine shouldn't enter NATO is um, you know you stop arming Ukraine um, so you had a scenario where basically the US ignored that and I believe the reason they ignored that was because they wanted to do a proxy war so they went out outside of the got out of Afghanistan so that they can focus in on Russia and when you what you've seen is the moves that the United States have made have been specifically to specifically to benefit the elite so the military industrial co complex who are making significant amount of money um, you have um, elites making significant amount of money whilst the people of the United States as well as Europe are getting absolutely destroyed in terms of being able to afford basic amenities and when you look at it again why the US so financially are benefiting but then also when they blew up the Nord Stream you saw a scenario where them and Norway worked together looks like and broke uh, and, and blew up the Nord Stream and then guess what Within days, who were the new supplies of the gas supplies to a lot of these regions? United States and Norway through Denmark had supplies ready. And so again, you see a scenario where there was significant efforts to make sure that they can control the weaponry, control the finances and control the gas supply. And who lost out more than anyone? Germany. So Germany being the basically lackeys that they are, have significantly lost out financially. They now, rather than being supplies to Poland, are basically getting supplies from Poland and so you have a scenario where the entire situation has been reversed and so moving back to the point because uh, in my view again I guess this is just an opinion it does look like Russia are doing better I wouldn't say they're winning but they're doing better in the war and you see that in terms of the efforts in uh, Bakhmut and so on and so forth and there's significant issues for, for Ukraine in two regards first of all manpower which is significantly lacking, and they've lost a lot of troops. Um, according to Mossad, 157,000, so that's a reliable source, of Ukrainian troops have died. In, in addition to that, you've got significant supply issues in terms of artillery from the United States, um, and, it's, and again, significant reports stating that when it comes to uh, the supplies, they've, they've, they've used their European supply and are now well into the Israeli supply. So it's a joint supply between Israel and the United States and they're into that supply. And they're trying to get extra supplies because of the problem. Uh, and the, for example, they're speaking to South Korea about getting another 100,000 uh, artillery unit, uh, 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 you know, uh, artillery uh, uh, situation. And so, just summarize, how do you solve a lot the of war? People were and, and this is like, because if you look at most of the people who are supporting Ukraine, it's the West whereas most of the world isn't. And in addition to that, how do you solve the problem? It's, it, it's not that hard. And the, the people should be thinking about the Ukrainian people as well as the Russian people. And the best way to solve it is to make the deal. The deal isn't that hard. And I agree with Trump. I think if Trump was in charge, this deal would have been done a long time ago. Well, Trump, man, um, you just don't want it to deal. Sorry, um, and, I, I and have the, to push back on your points, man. This is and, and then the, de sorry, the deal, the deal, the deal, the deal that um, is that basically Ukraine promises not to be part of NATO, they stop receiving supplies on the border of Russia, and then the extra regions I've already explained. So that's that's just my view. Uh, I'll let all can sorts I, jump in. and all sorts. Can I just yeah, of course. Quickly, yeah, jump in, Sebastian. And all sorts will push you, back against Slayman <laughs> as well. But go ahead. You, you don't reward a country for invading. You don't give them veto over their voluntary membership of an organization after they invade them. So that, that you know, you don't reward somebody for invading another country. With regards to the pipeline story in Norway's involvement, the Seymour, Harsh art, uh, Seymour Hirsch article is absolute crap, and we would, I would love to have uh, a spaces where we just... Or is it, it's being planned, definitely. We're trying to get Good. Seymour Hirsch himself oh, to come on as well. Superb. I can't wait. Um, and then one more thing. There is an amazing person you should... I'll send you his um, contact details. Former advisor to President, Thanks, President Putin... Uh, Professor Andrei Ilyarnyanov is now uh, based in um, D.C., very outspoken. He served in the Kremlin as economic advisor to Putin. You should go to get him on one of these spaces. And I'll you'll, connect yes. me, you'll connect me to him on WhatsApp yeah. or Twitter? Uh, I'll, I'll WhatsApp it right now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat>
Perfect. Thanks, Thanks, Sebastian. I appreciate Thanks. it. Uh, also, so I know you'll push back and Piotr, don't worry. Also, we'll do it uh, for you because I know you're boiling inside. Also, so I love your response, Sly Man and uh, Ian as well to kind of balance out the discussion and wrap up the space. Yeah, so um, the, the, the quickly about Bakhmut, um, Russia's been trying to seize that town for seven months and they've lost thousands if not tens of thousands of casualties trying to do it. So, you know, Russia's, let, let's make something abundantly clear. Russia's military strength as we know it has been severely degraded to the point where taking away their nukes, their they have been completely consumed by Ukraine, and in many ways you can argue that they are not a significant military threat to NATO at this point because of how consumed they are because of Ukraine. Um, and then this notion about, and I think this kind of ties into the, the, the space we had here, and I, and I tried to bring it up with Georgia Legion and everything. Uh, when we're talking about uh, Ukraine, I'm going to quote basically the U.S. administration, the West administration policy. Uh, no discussions about Ukraine without Ukraine. Ukrainians have agency. They have a voice in this matter. This is their country. They're fighting for it. They have every right to... Yeah, but that's also my fight. money, right? Well, prodigal, that's fine. You, that's a U.S. domestic consideration, but you can take all the money away. The We've Ukrainians got Ukrainians in here. What are you talking about? The, we, we've had uh, uh, Vladimir's uh, Ukrainian, and then we had the Georgian Legion on as well, who are fighting currently in Ukraine right now. And every time you listen, I highly encourage people to just listen to Ukrainians. They heavily all say the same we want to fight for our country that is what they want and of course they're going to request our support i wouldn't i don't blame them we would do the same we did the same after 9 11 where we went around the world to get support after our country was attacked so why are we going to blame ukrainians for doing the exact same thing and willing to fight and this is well, we're not blaming ukraine i think i don't think anyone's blaming ukrainians for asking for help i think they absolutely have the right to i'm blaming the military industrial complex ukraine yeah, what can, 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 you know? Mario, can I use my powers? I'm gonna use my powers. No, 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 yeah. no. We can't, we can't use on Ian though. <laughs> Ian is an exception. <laughs> usually called. But oh, good, oh, good, go ahead. Protocol is yeah. fine because protocol can pro protocol can mute me somehow. I don't know how, but go ahead also. So, so uh, I'm just saying, like you know, the Ukrainians have a voice in this, and and they're not some puppet or proxy, and this notion that. Well, let's have the Dr. reason, Kuzari, like the, the, the Hi, how are vote you? to Those annex uh, really Zaporizhia and her son of uh, the, the, the runs that the Russians did that supposedly Ohio, said Zaporizhia Blast is now Russian now. territory that over 90% well, of the people voted in favor. Um, the largest city in Zaporizhia, and, uh, the actual like city of Zaporizhia, was under Ukrainian control and they did not participate in that vote. So any referendum that they did is a complete sham. But um, so to the debate here and to the overall discourse that we had, Mario, I think two points. One, I don't I'm a close and defender uh, and, and right decision encourager like Piotr, or like Hagen. Anytime he speaks, What's don't expect breaking news. Um, these speeches that yeah, he does is general, standard, and the degradation of the West, our moral lack of morality. This is standard Putinism. Rarely does he give breaking news when his speeches. So I think everybody needs to be. I'm sorry? No, I'm just making a joke because you're saying it's pretty basic. No, sorry. So, and uh, so you had that right, and then and 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 I think that's something that you just have to take take into account that not every time Putin speaks, there's going to be breaking news. I do agree. We're still waiting on a year anniversary and seeing what other decisions are made by the Russian government, and if any. I think anything we say right now is pure speculation. And I'll and and I'll end I'll end my comments with two points, Mario. Uh, one, how long this war lasts. And I'm going to share this in the nest for everybody, and I highly recommend you 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 go and read this article. So an account Ocean Defender and I and Intel Sigil deal with a lot, his name is the Intel Hub. He tweeted this in March 8, 2022, and he said uh, it was from an article from CSIS, and it's how does it end? What past wars tell us about how to save Ukraine? And what he said was, and this is the tweet, I'm going to read it out loud, 20% of wars, 26% of wars like we are seeing right now between Russia and Ukraine end in less than 30 days. 25% end in less than a year. Most that end within a month, most that, en most that end within a month last eight days. When they last longer than a year, they tend to last more than a decade. So historically what we've seen is wars that pass a year of this nature and this magnitude last a decade. Some like the Iran Iraq war. That is the historical precedent that we're dealing with. And I think we all have to take that into account. I'm not saying that's what's gonna happen, the Iran-Iraq war basically lasted almost that long. And that's something we have to take into consideration and in mind 
when this is lasting. I've served, I've deployed to the Middle East. Um, I've seen what we did in Iraq and Syria against ISIS. We were in Afghanistan for 20 years. We killed a lot of Taliban and ISIS. And one thing we quickly realized is that body count does not determine the end of the war. We cannot take manpower when you have both nations view this as an existential And there's another, there's another, also there's another stat I was looking at that um, if you look at all the wars, and, and I think that was in a Joe Rogan interview, I can't remember who it is. If you look at all the wars that Russia's been involved in, all the major wars, uh, they lost, you know, they, they're, 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 uh, they play the attrition game where they they just throw bodies at a war. They lost 20 and million they, troops in the Second World War and civilians. That's, so they did, uh, and, and, and by the way, they've Ukraine always, in all wars, in all, oh, sorry, Ian, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. What were you saying, Ian? You know, I was saying both sides, I mean, they share a history, right? So you have to keep in mind that the Ukrainians are also, you know, uh, if you want to talk about World War II, you know, and it's it's, it's going to be both sides are, that are doing a war of attrition, not just one side. Yeah, I mean, but, but if you go, no, but, you know, but m moving away from World War II, now the point I wanted to make, guys, uh, Ian and Portugal, the point I wanted to make is um, uh, uh, also uh, in all wars, in all major wars, Russia lost 500,000 men in all of them, minimum. Uh, and right now we're at anywhere from 50 to 200,000 depending what which source you trust. Yeah, but how much of that was from alcohol poisoning? I mean, what percentage was it from actual <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, Ben. I don't know. I don't, so, don't know. Mara, no, yeah, you're, you're right. And I think Ukrainians have also demonstrated they're willing to take a lot of sacrifice. I mean, that w the situation has changed since this war started. When when Russia mobilized, that, 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 that changed everything. That changed the situation on the ground. Now you have eight, Ukraine more than Russia, but both countries viewed this as an existential fight that requires substantial amount of personnel to fight it, right? And I think that is why the, the, the number games of casualties has dropped in importance as a measurement of this war. And I think a lot of it now is going to go into the issues of equipment, but not only equipment as an artillery, but like modernized equipment. And but but we all, all sorts. Can, can I ask you a question then? I mean, I agree with your analysis. Uh, wouldn't that put more of an impetus on the West to try to pursue some type of settlement before we sacrifice countless Ukrainian and, and Russians towards the thing that may go to Like, what will be left of the country? Look, right? look Portugal, the, 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 the Ukrainians are going to fight regardless. That's yeah, but they can't the fight unless, unless, unless they you say, can't. hey, if you yeah, want exactly. aid, go well, to what the mean? If yeah, you want arms, how can they fight? The yeah, how can they fight without the NATO support? And that's not me taking Portugal's side. But yeah, just they just can. Say, but I know, I think they can, though. I think they can. Go to the table. I don't think they can. They don't have ammunition. If I may, if I may, like, I love how my, my end comment causes a stir. I love you, Particle. Um, what, 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 because, again, I'm going to go back to the, like, the Ukrainians can fight. If it's either a conventional war, if it's an insurgency. Russia, though, is one of the things that is very important to highlight. If you look at their military, their ability to do combined arms and exploit success has been severely degraded. It is not at the level that we would expect in the West where you see rapid advance. The Russians have shown a complete incompetency. And by the way, Mario, this can be a tit for tire space. Let me end with this. This is my final point. Okay. Love everybody here. This is my final point. On the, the, the notions of World War III and the nukes, right? I mean, not World War III and the nukes. Everybody brings up the Crimea issue, right? If Ukraine pushes to Crimea, I have said this in the past and I'll say it again. If you're Vladimir Putin, and Ukrainians are threatening the territorial holds of Crimea, I think it's significantly more likely a palace coup than launching nuclear weapons. If I'm Vladimir Putin and Ukraine is threatening to seize Crimea, I would be looking at my generals on the right, I'd be looking at my general generals on the left, and I would be you want internal to circle take. for internal palace coup. That would be yeah, quite is a that a gamble you want to take is the question, with nuclear weapons? I want to I wanna go, I wanna go to Vladimir, I want to kind of wrap it up with you, Vladimir. Um, and and Prodigal is a fair question, but uh, I agree with that question. Like it's it's just too risky of a gamble. But bloody me, I just want to kind of wrap it up with other things. Like I just don't want to, don't want people to 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 forget the human cost of all this. Like it's, I just told my my partner who's Ukrainian and and whole families in Ukraine. I've been to Ukraine a lot, and I've got a lot of Ukrainian friends, etc. And I um, I told them, I told her like it's, I just don't. I know war is necessary at times. I'm not saying this war is necessary. Necessary at times, and uh, generally, I'm always, almost always against war. But I just don't, I just don't understand why no one's de-escalating because the amount of damage this has caused to the countries is ridiculous. Like I've seen photos of Odessa now, and I've been to Odessa. I was dancing in Odessa two months before the war, 
I spent uh, months in Kharkov Palace in that beautiful hotel, the five-star hotel, incredible hotel. Just everything is destroyed. Um, so I just want to, you know, no matter what your position is, kind of end it on that note, Vladimir, and to everyone in Ukraine, whether you're pro-Russia, anti-Russia, um, you know, my thoughts are with you, uh, and the world's fucking disgusting. But I'd love to. If there's yeah. a it's, 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 let's Mario. just remember God, there, there, are, there are five Tom, million. If, if there, there's a yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll let you respond, Vladimir. I'll let Tom jump in and I'll let you wrap up the space, Vladimir. And you know, there's an urgency to ending this war. There's five million refugees, and we can't forget about them, and obviously the carnage that continues. Uh, this is why I'm so opposed to the Biden's program of war, as opposed to as opposed to a quick victory. Yeah, this isn't limited to Ukraine and Russia. Right, uh, large swaths. Let's 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 wrap, let's wrap, guys, guys, let's wrap, no, let's, saying, wrap, wrap. Like this is affecting the whole world. Like the I know. Yeah, we're talking about involvement of China now. Some and, uh, and some uh, increase in true. inflation. Yeah. Are, 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 are my yeah. I think let, let I want to hear from Vladimir. Sorry. Yeah, yeah sorry. I agree. I agree. Vladimir, I would love you. Country, exactly, just, Vladimir. Just, final just, words, man. Just very short remarks from my side. Thank you, Mario, once again for for your sympathy and great topic for discussion. It's very important for us and for the whole world. I will d just tell you openly that uh, Ukrainians do remember the cost of Russian occupation and those 400 years we spent on the Russian Empire and Soviet Union with small forces for independence. And uh, our knowledge is that any war with Russia cost us less than peace with Russia. Uh, we send back our families to European Union, to the United States, and we are very grateful once again to your countries to keep them safe, and we fight. Believe me, I was not born to be Rambo or a great fighter. And I used to be politician. I'm still politician. I used to be minister. What was uh, uh, Vladimir? Took, question. I took question. To fight. Question for you. I want to wrap up the space, and I want it to be a non-political answer if possible, just to wrap up the space. But question yep. for you: What was it? What was it like when when Russia crossed that border? Actually. Before Russia crossed that border, did you guys, I wouldn't have said you guys know, but did you guys realize that it's a very likely scenario that Russia's going to cross the border uh, when everyone thought like war was, was improbable? And second, because it caught a lot of citizens by, by surprise, uh, whereas people within the, the, the administration apparently knew or, or, or were more concerned. And then what was the response like when the, when the border was crossed and when they, they were getting closer and closer to Kiev? You know, for me, it was not surprise because I'm from Western Ukraine, and for me, Russia is natural enemy. Uh, for many Ukrainians, yes, it was a great surprise, even shock, I would say, especially for Eastern uh, part of, of Ukraine, because they always thought that, yes, there were some troubles with Russia, but they are friends, they seem even relatives. And when they saw troops, tanks, uh, and soldiers killing, civilians, uh, militaries, without any uh, kind of uh, distinction, uh, it was a great discovery. And, you know, I was really personally surprised because I was at that time in Kyiv, how many people volunteered to take arms and to protect uh, country and uh, its own city. Because for me it was a big question mark. Is it only regular army to fight back Russians? Or people will stand. People stood up. Oh, man, well, I appreciate your final words. I appreciate all the panelists. Um, Sebastian, thanks for coming on. Tom as well. Also, Slayman, thanks for helping co-host. Uh, Piotr, Intel Schizo, Vladimir, Patrick, Portugal, and all other panelists that came through over the last four and a half hours. This is jam-packed panels. Really, really good discussion. And uh, yeah, I hope the audience found value. If you got any questions, any comments, bottom right corner. You can put it there before I wrap up the space. And I'll see you tomorrow. I think tomorrow we're doing two spaces. Um, and one about the Ohio incident, the train derailment that Nick is covering. Nick will lead that space because he's out there with Ohio. I think he's meeting Trump tomorrow. And we have, and he's talking on all the press. And then we have uh, for all the crypto guys, we're doing our monthly crypto show as well tomorrow. He was trying to do something positive, and he got greedy and self absorbed. And so he has no one to blame but himself. And it became all about him, right? 
it became all about him. He wa- Do you remember uh, Dancing with the Stars? And one of the dancers says, this show's about me. No, you're just one of the dancers. I've worked with people in mental health business who use the company credit card sometimes and say, oh, I'm paying it back. No, it's called embezzlement. One of them is a female who went to jail for eight years just for the payback that they couldn't track. So it was really stupid for someone that smart to get caught up in the power. And some people think that bad men seek power, but power can make good men bad men, too, with time. You know? You just kind of get lost in the flow. <laughs> it, takes, it takes a lot of discipline when money comes at you hard. I know. It takes a lot of discipline. You know, you go from making a couple hundred grand a year to $2 million a month. And a lot it of takes, attention it, <laughs> from exactly. all sorts of people. Yeah, and, and you Power start thinking. addictive. Yeah. Now, 100%. It's underestimated, it's underestimated what, what people that survive going through that, it, it, people, uh, it's, it's like a drug, man. But he see, kind of made work what do you, with his 45 minutes yesterday, I thought. Right, right, right. GC, well, what, what, what do you think is uh, – yeah, I absolutely appreciate <laughs> you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. <laughs> GC, well, what do you think is next for James O'Keefe, man? I mean, do you think he bounces back from this? I mean, dude, he's got a big follower base. A lot of people trust the guy. A lot of people love the guy. Do you think he bounces back from this on top? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, what, what, he's going to have to start – I mean, he's going to have to start over, right? He's going to have to start – He's going to have to start having meetings. He's, that payroll is taken away from him. First, first thing that happens to anybody in this situation, this isn't the James. He goes from $2 million a month budget to, all right, there's no money. Like everything gets everything gets stopped. You understand? Like whatever he thought he was going to be doing next month, he can't even pay for it now. That's over. So he's going to have to go through those adjustments. Now he's got to figure out, well, who am I? What is the company? Okay, who's going to be – who are my donors going to be? Uh, who can I have meetings with? You know, the, the guy comes off very – if I come off as arrogant as he does, I, I really got to do some work on myself because it's not a good look. That smug – even when he was reading a letter today, I'm like, bro, at least, like, feel bad for the people you're leaving. I'm like, God damn, there's got to be friends there. So if I had my company taken away from me, I'd cry. It would hurt. It would hurt, man. And um, I, you know, I will. Anyway, I, I, you know, I don't know what he's going through, but I, I'm sure he's going to have a lot of. It's going to take a second, bro. He's going to have to go through grief of losing this thing he had. You know, the story that he had. I don't know what this. What does this mean to the story that he had going? And whose story is that now? <laughs> you know, I wonder whose story that is now. Thousand percent, thousand what do you percent. Think? What do you think? What, what do you think? Whose story is that? I mean, it's, it, uh, honestly, it's at this not, point, it wouldn't be his story. It would be, it would be, it would be uh, Project Veritas' story. Yeah, but it's not. It's not a story. I think people are going to gravitate to. I, I think. I think those guys. What, what, do you, what do you mean, the Pfizer story? Well, the Pfizer story is different, but I don't know. Moving forward. I just don't think they're going to get that who, much support. Who, who who owns that story, though? Veritas. Okay, the intellectual property of Project Veritas. Veritas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. 100%. And that, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. He was, you know, he's going to have to relook. Oh, what's his next story? That one's gone for him. That was going to be his baby, bro. Oh. See oh, what I'm saying? Oh. That was his story, bro. It's not his story anymore. Oh. He, he, oh. he, he, you see what I'm saying? That was his product, right? The video, the that, recording. that was the one he was gonna he was gonna win an Emmy for it or a Grammy or whatever you win for stories, right? Uh, Pulitzer Prize. That ain't happening now. Oh man! Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! You are goddamn right about that. Wow, man, he must be going through it right now. What? The biggest story that he's ever been a part of. Literally the biggest story taken away from him. Blink of an eye, snap of a finger. Like that. Damn. Ooh. No 
those board of directors, man. That shit. A bunch of heartless motherfuckers, man. That's crazy. Couple Maze. hundred thousand to do it. Maze. I, I, I mean, Maze, touch on that for a little bit, right? Let's talk about it. All right. So I wasn't going to say it, but I'm going to say it because this is something that I thought prior to listening to the video. How, and that changed my mind a little bit. But I'm just going to throw it out there. What if, hypothetically, they were offered a certain amount of money that they could not say no to that made more than they've ever made in the 13 years that they were open to pretty much dismantle Veritas? Just saying, because the timing, I can't, it's hard to deny the timing, but... When I heard the video, I don't know, I've never had, I've never even spoken to the man. I am very grateful for his work, 100%. We're all human, okay? And he might have looked at that as like a lifelong payoff as well as a new start. But I'm not saying that's what it is. <laughs> I'm just thinking and speaking up out loud. What do y'all think? I mean, what I think is in the next 10, 20, 30 years, I, I don't think James O'Keefe can get a big story from this. That That's what I he think. He didn't need one after that. I yeah. mean, I, I don't I think I mean, I'm not saying he we did it, y'all. I'm just, we're thinking out loud and critically, and I'm just being honest. That was the first thing that came to my mind, but he did seem very sincere in the video. So If they got paid, he would have a very viable lawsuit against the organization. Yeah, but he's gonna have to prove that that happened. I, I, There's already been text messages leaked. No, I, I, I don't think he has anything. He be, he'd have a viable story for what? Well, I think he have a, uh, I think he have a vi viable lawsuit. I mean, he already talked about there was a reporter who was asked to take a position against him, and he leaked those text messages. B viable I don't think you're catching my It was in what? the video. Well, uh, a viable lawsuit about what? About being terminated? I mean, I, I think if they conspired to getting him out of out of his organization or a contract, I think that he would have a lawsuit against the organization. But didn't he resign? Well, he was forced. I mean, <laughs> he was forced out of a job. They said he no longer worked there. He had no, no position no, there. No, no, he, he wasn't fired. He, he, he resigned. Well, according to him, he says that he has no position there. They suspended him from his job. And that he had he had no position with the company. I mean, you know, for violating the bylaws, I I think you know they legally had every right to do so. They legally had every right to suspend the guy, right? Again, he didn't get fired; he got resigned, right? That's that's the, those are two completely different scenarios when looked at, you know, by law. You know what I'm saying? So, I, and, and by the way, I'm not going to pretend to be a lawyer in this room right now. So, I I think this is a pointless debate. But ultimately, here's the deal. Leave, leave that to Chira. 100%, you know. <laughs> but ultimately, here's the deal, man. The deal is James O'Keefe is no longer with Project Veritas. The deal is, like Grant said, that Pfizer story was James O'Keefe's baby. That, that single-handedly was the biggest story of his entire history as a journalist, period. That he was, was the big one, right? That was the big, 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 big one. And right now, quite frankly, I mean, that's gone from him, man. That's That's been taken away. And I don't think in the next 10, 20, 30 years, he's going to be able to come up with, with a bigger story than that, right? Because, I mean, COVID, COVID, I mean, Jesus Christ, the biggest topic across the globe over the past three years. And he just happened to land this particular story. What are the odds of being able to repeat that again in a lifetime? I mean, it's pretty much the odds of trying to win the lottery, right? So I mean, what's next for James O'Keefe? I, I have no idea what it's going to be. Mm -hmm. but And Nelson, Nelson, remember, he, he didn't get into this for the money, okay? He got into it for the for – his dream had to be, I'm going to break the bigger – I'm going to win a Pulitzer Prize reporting one day. That had to be the dream. Then the money came. Facts, and, 100%. And, and now, 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 man, he had the story in his hands. And this story will probably get buried now. Yeah, I would say that's because the board hated him. 
I mean, check man, 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 about Hunter. Yeah, I mean, I think I read where like the average CEO of a Fortune 500 or a Fortune public company ends up lasting for about four years. So he he's probably worked with that board for a long time, and uh, I think uh, Mays was saying that you know maybe they're going to get a bigger payday, but I know that they were also going to be the owners of the story. So maybe they hated him so much that they're like. Well, we're not going to let it continue, so we're just going to put him down. And that would be the time to do it. 100%. 100%. I'm going to go to Mary. Mary. Well, it, 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 if that's the outcome, then, then Project Veritas would actually be resurrected. Absolutely. M Mary, what are your thoughts about this? Yeah, so Let's talk about it. I see did you guys read which i'm sure you did what pfizer had to, i mean not pfizer but i'm sure what project veritas and board had to say because if you yeah we yeah, we read it earlier yeah so if you think about like the few things that they're talking about are so insignificant in you know based on um on what they were talking about and i just i don't think that after you do a giant story like that you would ever want to create any kind of negativity of that nature you just wouldn't do that like there's no way i mean i fully 100 percent believe that Pfizer had everything to do with it, and Pfizer gave the other guys a payday, or, or you know, said, you know, you've got to get rid of him. Whatever that looked like, I, I just think for a second that it was anything other than the fact that, you know, Pfizer was just, it, you know, he's bigger than, you know, they're bigger than, than, than he is, and, you know, they either threatened him or whatever, but I, you just, you don't do that right after, you know, you don't, you just don't do that and create all of this negativity around your brand, especially, um, you know, es especially a nonprofit. And the other thing is they want it so well. So, like, by eliminating him, they eliminate any money that flows in, and Project Veritas basically goes away, which is exactly what Pfizer wants. So, you know, and, and yeah, to get to not get a Pulitzer Prize, but you know what, he would he wasn't going to get it anyway because everything is so corrupt now. There's no way that they would have. You know that they would have ended up giving it to him, even though he deserved it completely. So I was, I was a little bit surprised though to to find out when it said when he said that basically, you know, that he knew he was taken off the board. But then what what I keep saying Pfizer, what Project Veritas had to say, the board had to say was completely different from what he had to say in the video. So and I, obviously I'm just jumping on now, so I don't know if you guys have talked about that yet. But there were definitely differences in what the board had to say versus what he had to say. But no, I just, I can't see it. You don't create that negative attention right after you just, um, you know, you just literally had the biggest story in the, you just don't do that. He was clearly freaked out and it just happened synchronously, I think, because of Pfizer and he knows what that payday was. Or again, they may have said, I think Mays, I don't know if Mays was just saying it a second ago, but, I mean, they could have said, look, we'll give you $50 million to make it go away. you got to get rid of him, you know, or there you go. But I don't think so. I think that they gave those guys some sort of a payday, and everybody knows that they're not going to get any money without him. They're not going to get any donation without him. So Project Veritas ceases to exist, and the story, you know, and the problem is over for Pfizer. So that's what you're saying. Did he ever say how long he worked on that story? Like, how long did the board know he was working on it? Man, they said they worked on that thing for a long yeah. time. Years. They worked on that thing for a long time. I mean, you know, the, the, here's the deal. And, and here's why, you know, Maze's point in regards to maybe somebody got paid has some sort of what, – what, what, well, well it, it's probably something to talk about, right? Because here's the deal. They know for a fact, hey, we take James out, you know, we're probably not going to raise any, <laughs> any you know, ridiculous amount of money or, you know, in in the near future, right, period. Yeah, Especially at a time like yeah. this, right? Because this, this season, this could have been a season of, I mean, freaking money piling into Project Veritas, literally raining on Project Veritas. I mean, you have a video with 50, mil 50 million plus plays from across the globe that's 50 million eyes and more looking at the name Veritas right 
maybe half of those people going on Google to search Veritas and landing on your website. And wow, I love their mission. Let me donate. I mean, this, 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 this would have been the season of oh my god for that company. I mean, 2023 could have been a crazy year for that organization. And now they literally just fucked everything up by, you know, doing all this nonsense publicly with the, the face of the guy. I mean, I mean, the face of the goddamn organization, right? I mean, it's, it's just absolutely insane. So one of two things, right? Either the board is filled with stupid individuals that... that 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 just know nothing about run, running an organization or two somebody definitely got paid and they felt that the payday makes more sense than relying on you know donations that that you know i, I don't know man I, I i i really don't know but this this is just a crazy situation man like that whole story is dead now that entire no. story is not being talked about anymore, right? Pfizer, COVID vaccine, the big blockbuster story is not being talked about anymore. What's being currently talked about is James O'Keefe leaving Project Veritas. That entire thing is buried. No one's talking about it anymore, right? Which is just absolutely ridiculous. And on top of that, people are asking for refunds. Grant's asking for a refund. Kim.com is asking for a refund. The pe matter of fact, let's let, let's do this right now. If you're if you're in a room right now and you donated Project Veritas and you want a refund, hit that chat feature at the bottom right corner of your screens right now and put hashtag, hashtag want a refund. Hashtag want a refund. Right? <laughs> put put that in there right now. Ha <laughs> shit, that's 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 a good tagline, Grant. Hashtag want a refund. I just want to know how many people in this room really want a refund from Veritas, right? I mean, God damn. But Nelson, I, I, Nelson I, this was, I, they knew that was going to happen. Like, they, they knew it. It's, it's problem solved. I mean, now they're not going to get any donations. I, I really truly believe that. Everybody says without him, it's nothing. And, you know, somebody, yes, got threatened or paid a lot of money as a group. Because, um, again, I, it didn't, I, don't, I don't think you do any, any, any of those things. Um, especially after the guy just became this giant hero. I don't care what he did, you know, you, you just, again, you wouldn't do that because you know that it's going to harm. If you wanted to keep that charity running, this would never have happened. I don't believe that they want it to run whatsoever. So it's problem solved. Man, just absolutely insane. But let's keep the conversation rocking and rolling. I'm going to bring some new people on stage that have hit the request button. But in the meantime, let me go to Honey Badger. Honey Badger. Hey, Let's talk Nelson. About it. Hey, you know what? Here's the thing. I'm not. I'm. I'm not. A, I'm not in any position to judge the board of Project Veritas because I've not had enough money offered to me to understand what that's like. I, that's an unpopular opinion. Okay. But then also taking a step forward. Okay, listen. We knew that this was. We knew that everything was crazy from the beginning. We knew that you know. So. The, the board of directors basically came out with a bunch of HR, you know, complaints. No, you know, uh, like no investigation. No, you know, it didn't go in front of HR and there was no process. No, bam. These are all the complaints at you, sir. So now you got to go. And and not only that, it was after it, it was after his meeting. Um, it was after the meeting between DeSantis and Locke. They were, you know. And it was interesting to me to find the next day that, you know, James was uh, suspended. So all I am saying is this. If you look at all of the details between the bullshit HR, HR complaints versus, versus what happened right after that meeting and then moving forward to where they're, like, you know, accusing him of taking donation money. It's like, who made more fucking do donation money than the face of Veritas? That's it. Thank you. Thousand percent. Maze, go ahead. All right, this is problematic because now I'm sitting here and I can't get this out of my head. Not only would that make sense, but because it was so public, this was way too public, y'all. Way too damn public. Everything was public. And the timing, and, and you know what? I know it's an unpopular opinion. I will say I don't know the man. I can't judge him. 
I appreciate his work. But I'm also a critical thinker. And I, I'm sorry. I mean, I am a conspiracy theorist too. So, you know what? Call me what you want. But that shit, if you think about it, it, it makes perfect sense. Why else would you do everything so publicly? And why would it be right after that? I don't know. Whatever. I'm sorry. I'm just I'm just speaking my mind. I can't, I can't I can't seem to just dismiss that. I don't know. I hope you wouldn't. No, absolutely. Man, I don't know absolutely. What Eric, Man, go I ahead. don't know what you just said. I I, I, what, what I see that that's, that's, I got that. I, you know, I have no fucking clue. Bro. <laughs> Are you guys serious? Okay. I, I, I didn't hear you a goddamn James, thing you James said. Oh, hold check. on. Huh? This is well. This is just a hypothesis. What if Pfizer offered them a huge amount of money that was impossible to say no to? That's what I'm saying. The timing of everything and the fact that it was so public. Are you catching my drift now, Grant? I don't yeah. know though. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely catching that drift. Okay, so that's what you were saying. I, I mean, I, I think it was the food in your mouth and the chewing. You know. Yeah, you caught me. Maybe it confused right me a, a little bit. Salad, you know what I'm, I'm saying? Sorry. But okay, okay. You know, absolutely, absolutely. Eric, talk about well, it. Well, I mean, if if they worked on this story for years, and you know, James is the face of, you know, the story, and it sounds like his office was kind of toxic. I mean, he definitely came across as a, a one-sided guy. And you start making millions of dollars, you can probably start to create enemies real quick. And so I imagine he had somebody in that office every day that was just waiting and just waiting for the right opportunity with knives out. And he presented it, uh, you know, uh, especially getting on here and, you know, going in the direction of, you know, I know when Grant was trying to talk to him and stuff, it was really hard to listen to because he was just running around like a dude with his shirt off, you know, saying he was Superman. And so I could only imagine how that was every day in the office. And so I think he probably created way too many enemies and it just, he got paid back. So. No, I, I definitely see a guy like that having a lot of enemies, you know, in-house, 100%. I mean, listen, listen. I definitely, you know, with the whole Veritas thing, I was definitely a fan. I was definitely a fan of what O'Keefe was doing. Not necessarily a fan of the guy himself, you know, especially with that first interaction on this stage. You know, I mean, the dude, I'm, it's, man, that boy, that, the boy, that, that boy can't stop flexing, man. He just can't stop flexing. And, you know, I'm, I'm glad you caught that as well. I mean, you know, to the point, you know, one or two questions. It, it, it seemed like he was sort of being snobby with Grant. I was texting Grant in the background. I'm like, bro, you seen this shit, bro? What the fuck is going on? You know, because Grant's raising money for you and you're giving him a little bit of attitude. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? So, but at the end of the day, you know, the main thing for, for me in that space was, hey, the mission, Veritas's mission, James's mission, not necessarily James O'Keefe as a person. But with what you said right now in regards to, you know, that ego and that attitude and the possibility of having snakes within the organization, I mean, I, I definitely I definitely see that as a possibility, 100%. I see it as a possibility. But again, just going back to what May said, the timing on all of this is suspect as fuck. The timing is suspect, man. I mean... Right after the Pfizer story, you're talking about an organization that's that's been in operation for 13 years. I mean, James on his stage said they raised 20 some million dollars last year, right? So I, I mean, they've <laughs> right. So they raised 20 some million dollars last year. They raised seven figures the year before. So these guys are already used to raising large amounts of money. I'm pretty sure they they have bookkeepers. I'm pretty sure they have accountants that file taxes. I'm pretty sure if the CEO was spending a shit ton of money, you know, that he wasn't supposed to have been spending, they would have realized that shit ages ago. Why is it right now when the Pfizer story breaks, you want to come out and say, oh, he's spending a shit ton of money on bullshit. 
Let's take him out. It is I mean, suspect. That money's not even a lot. It is suspect. It's not that much money. Like, if, that, if that's the best you've got, you know, like, it's it's nothing. And again, I, I just, I, I, I just don't, I don't, I, I don't see it. I, I just, I think that the story was too big. Pfizer got heavily involved. And, you know, they had to make, and it's not an example out of them, they had to get rid of them so they could destroy the, you know, and not continue to bring more money in. So, I don't know exactly how that potentially, you know, came about. But, uh, again, I don't care how, you know, and, you know, Steve Jobs, on his own accord, said that he, you know, that he was a dupe, right? That he was a really awful, terrible, you know, n not terrible, mean leader because he wanted the best in his people. So, you know, and, and I, I totally understand exactly what what um, what he was saying, what, you know, what like he was saying. I, I mean, he, where he said, I, I don't care how your Thanksgiving is, I don't ask you about it, or whatever. I mean, when you're, when you're, we all know that everybody wants that, but I understand, you know, how much he was working his people. And, you know, there are a lot of people that would say the same thing about me, and I'm sure Grant and you, you know, Nelson, I mean, but then you've got the people that have been there for a long time, and we pushed people, you know, past places that they thought that they could even go. And, you know, and he brought that up, and he said there was a lot of turnover. So, you know, but again, I mean, that's what happens with brilliant people. Geniuses have lots of turnover. Like, it just is the case, and they're not always the nicest people anymore. I mean, you saw the same thing yeah. So, Mary, so, Mary, you said basically these geniuses, they steal money, and it's okay. So it's okay for geniuses to steal and steal. Well, how, okay. what, what part are you guys? I mean, I, I may be missing something because to say that to that fourteen thousand dollars for a flight or that he used some money for a, for an experience for some musicians. I mean, or, or, like is am I? I maybe I'm missing something because I don't see where that's. I don't see how that's stealing, and I also don't know that like yeah. that's what they said. I mean, if that's the best you've got, you're gonna talk about embezzling hundreds of thousands of dollars. Okay, then then you've got a story, but okay. you don't do that. But well, I'm so sorry, you don't do that two weeks after and after doing. He they weeded him out. He needed to be gone. That's what that that's what, and otherwise you wouldn't do it. You, you know, let me just say this, Mary, because what what you see, what you guys are sort of like, oh, this all happened because of the story. No, this is happening in Florida before the story, okay? And and I think O'Keefe may have had a deal in place that did something so he can get the story out, okay? And so, like, once again, guys, I, I, you're sitting there and you're saying that, uh, oh, the story. No, this, 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 this step, they, they, you don't document this kind of step in a matter of a day or two, okay? This this came from some digging. And, and you know, what and kind I know of great. theft? What part am I missing? Am I missing like? Yeah, they had a whole line. They had a whole they list. Had, they had they a had whole list. Things that were nothing. Not, uh, no, no, no. Once again, they, and they said that was not even an in-depth well, uh, dive. M if Mary. you're gonna do that, then put the big ones up there because those things are nothing. Yeah, like, Mary, Mary, what, what we're saying, Mary, is okay. This is what they did. This is what they. This is what they did. Just with a, a, a quick look, a quick review, stuff that they could find with a quick review. All right, so uh, they will be able to find, you know, first of all, fourteen thousand uh, dollar flight uh, to get uh, for a boat to get fixed or something like that. That's that's crazy, okay. And remember, this is a, excuse me, a non-profit organization. It's a not-for-profit. That money has to be spent and accounted for a, a, a lot differently than a for-profit organization. And you that's would what you never blow up your organization. Ever, you would never blow up a non-profit over fourteen thousand dollars. You would no, never. No, no. Discredit your main guy after doing a story. You, you don't see Mary. What the hell? You wouldn't do it for Ma any amount of money. Mary, you what are you? Discredit your own. Well, Mary, what aren't you getting, Mary? This, this money has to be accounted for. No, you, you're, 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 saying, you're missing the point. No, I'm not missing the point, yes, Mary. You you're missing, missing the point. point. You Mary, the point. Ma Mary, Mary, listen to me because you, you, I, I know you're, you're, you're in business, the point, but Mary. you don't know business. Listen, listen to me. I don't know business. I can guarantee my company's worth a hell of a lot more money than yours. One, one second, Mary. What I'm saying to you, Mary, is this right here, Mary. Okay? This I don't know business. Is your company no. worth $20 Mary, million? Dollars? Mary, 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 what I'm saying to you is this right here, Mary. Okay? I just told you it's a non-profit. Okay? They have special report, reporting measures. You're saying, oh, no, it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter. It, 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 it's only $14,000. You don't blow up a company over that. Okay? It was more than $14,000. That's one thing. And that's what you guys look at one thing. You guys pull one thing out and say, oh, it's just that one thing. Okay? You're, it missing, was, uh, the whole, you're missing the PR behind it. Forget that, about no, the money. 
Forget it's about not about PR. Yes, it, it is. That's exactly what it's about. And it's not about PR when you're running a nonprofit. You have a charter. You have everything. You're, you have you have you bylaws. You, have, it, you do not. You do not do that two weeks after doing a story like Ma that. Ma Mary, Mary, have you lost your goddamn mind? No, you Please. have. You're not paying any attention to the facts. The, the fact, Mary, that's all I'm talking about. Are Mary, the facts? You're not paying attention to what. You're not paying attention to the reality. That this Th that's like, all I'm speaking about is reality. They would never blow him up if they wanted this if they wanted to continue the nonprofit. They, you, they, they, they get would audited. Never have done that. Your, your books get audited, Mary. Oh my God. They would keep it quiet. They would never do that and throw him out over fourteen thousand dollars. He needed no, to no, go. you know what, Mary? He fired the goddamn CFO. He fired his, the, the chief strategic officer. Do you, do you not think that those guys went out there and said, Hey, we saw some improprieties? Not to okay. know. I do not okay. believe for a oh, second. Oh, so, so they, he fired them, and they were like, okay, yeah, he fired yeah, us. Have that, a nice life. He fired the, the one person. I don't know about the other one, but he said that he fired him because they because they did not agree on the way that um, that they should do um, their strategy in reference to how they got their dollars, you know. And so that's what he said. And he has every right in the world as the CEO of that. He has not had that. every right yes, in the world. Yes, he does. No, he CEO, doesn't. The fire. Yeah, the fire an executive staff member, you got to get the board permission. And he said that he had one of the board members' uh, yeah, permission. Yeah, yeah. And, and that board member said, call bullshit on it, Mary. Yeah, I know. And guess what? It so, called bullshit on him. I, Jonathan, you're missing, you're missing, they would never eliminate, they would never take out their main guy, who is the one that is 100% the name behind it, after two weeks. Do you know how much money they were going to about, they were about to receive? How much money that they were that they were going to get for all of the work that he did, and then you throw them out, and so you you solve a couple of situations. Again, you eliminate the I mean, it would cease to exist without it. So then Project Veritas, you know, whatever they got for doing it, they got. But to suggest that fourteen thousand, I don't care if it's two hundred, three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars, if you wanted to maintain that nonprofit and you wanted it to stay in business. You would never publicly out your main man. Not, not a chance. It would never happen. So he needed to go, and that's why he's gone. Yeah, because you're right, Mary. You're right. I am you're right. right. I am right. Huh? You're right. I'm yeah. not gonna argue. Let, 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 let's get Piotr's take on this. Piotr, what are your thoughts? Let's talk about it. Uh, I think that was really funny. Um, uh, I, I appreciate you on the phone for actually giving some degree of facts about how nonprofits work versus profits. There is a big distinction there, which I think needs to be kept in mind. Uh, but frankly, I, I think that this is rather interesting. All I would point out is that so many people, not necessarily in here, but across the internet, were raving about this revelation, uh, about the recording, and how wonderful James is, and how wonderful PV is. And yet now we've got this infighting and, and, and result, and frankly, I find it quite hilarious. Um, that they that, that whatever's happened, whoever did it, or whatever happened, I got into a tweet storm with uh, James briefly, um, and you know he he was. Uh, <laughs> this is the biggest thing that PV has done, right? I don't really know much about them, but I know that, and that's because they were constantly retweeting the video and saying how amazingly influential it was. Um, and James was very proud of that as well, and he was the one to capture the uh, the, the senior director or whoever it was. Of Pfizer in the in the in the cafe and this is that video of him chasing him around and, and near the thing and then they filmed the police coming and all that. Uh, I find it rather bizarre that PV let him go or he left or, or whatever it is. But all I can say is for people who um, critique or, or suddenly are absolutely loving the organisations like PV and then suddenly they oust one of their own or something. These sorts of things can happen everywhere. So maybe the mainstream media or maybe some other major corporations aren't that different to what PV is claiming to be, which is, well, they've done the very same thing that has happened in all sorts of places. So, you know, either align yourself to the person or the organization, but don't look through anything like this with such rose-tinted glasses, because clearly PV has an agenda like everybody else, uh, and James was let go or something happened. So, you know, not surprised, funny, quite funny. That's all I will say. I mean, but but again, right? I I, I definitely have to highlight Mary's point because I agree with Mary, right? It, it, with regards to this, the timing on all of this is suspect. I mean, you're not gonna let your main guy go, right? In such a public fashion, 
right yeah, but after. No, that's my point. That's, the that's biggest point. story drops. You know what I'm saying, Piotr? But, I mean, but that's my point, Nelson. If they align to you about how they let go of King James, can you trust that the other information that they've provided is truthful, including this video about the Pfizer person? I'm just saying, if they've lied mm. to you about the leader of the entire organization and actually decided to oust him or let him go, or it was all pre-planned, I don't know. But I'm just my main point here is that PV clearly has some questionable skeletons in the closet, uh, and so can you believe everything else that they're pushing as well? Because that makes me wonder, personally. Wow, that's a that's a great point that well, you brought up there. It's hypocritical. That's my point. How, how I don't understand why that what you're saying though, like why what is one has to do with the other? Because you <laughs> use PV as a source of legitimate information. You believe on them for their authenticity and legitimacy and transparency, right? You believe not you personally, but I mean as people, you people who watch the video and believe that the information that they shared about the Pfizer director is absolutely true, not edited or manipulated to p push an agenda, much like everybody, including myself, probably listeners think I have an agenda and, and so on, right? But my point is that if they're lying about what's happened to James O'Keefe now, can you really believe that everything they also have done is equally truthful and transparent? Because this is not good. No, you can't. Their, their I, one does not equal one does not equal the other. I'm sorry. Oh, Before interesting. So decision. funny how it only applies so, to certain things. That's well, what I always say to James half the things the, you guys have James done. was the one that was ousted. I don't understand. James is the one that was responsible for running the... So that's your theory. The, you don't know if he was ousted. That's your theory. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, so uh, you're saying it was the board that did that, that, that well, you, you, you don't know, Mary. You're, 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 you're arguing against your own stuff right now. This is brilliant. No, I'm not arguing against myself. What I'm saying is... Precisely, you are. <laughs> James was running it. The board threw him out. So I'm not sure how you're saying that they're... But do you think that was all put together? Like... We're going to throw them out and give them a payday. No, Mary, my because point is is that you're conjecturing. You are speculating as much as all of us are. And my point is that a lot of people in here believe in the uh, crowd-driven citizen journalism, investigative journalism of TV, right? Because you believe it to be genuine, transparent. You can believe everything they say. But if they're not telling the truth about what's happened in the relationship with James, then that makes me question whether or not they are really that person. Or they've let go of him and done some other things because of the inconsistencies. Piotr, Sorry, can I can we, I argue? We, yeah, go for it, Maze. Go for it. Well, so here's what I I mean, I see your point. Okay, so that it you know it's it's plausible, but let yep. me just say that I like anybody anybody I think in that situation, whether or not they would eventually do it, would think long and hard. I'm talking about that kind of money. I mean, so. His intention when he actually went to go do it was to do his job, what he's passionate about. He's got it on tape. I, I personally, this is more of a, just you know, my opinion. I can't, I can't say factual, but I think that that was all legit. I don't. It's, it's just one of those situations where you're offered something that you just can't refuse, and and you know, but doesn't. I don't think that it was like, oh, I'm gonna go intentionally do this to bribe them. If that's what you're, if that's what you're suggesting, I don't think so. Well, someone, so someone, someone just put something in the comments tag to me, and it's similar. So uh, someone's put, they obviously got hush money from Pfizer, so that's why they acquired and got up. So wait, so are we now agreeing that PV has been bought out by the establishment as well? Like, where does this end? You know what I mean? It's just. Uh, for me, we, 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 we want to see grassroots, independent initiatives happen, and then suddenly they break through the, the biggest story of their lives or whatever, their existence, and now suddenly they've sold out and they're, they're converting to the very machine that they were trying to undo, i.e. the political or... Well, think, okay, stuff. you have to say well, allegedly. <laughs> you but allegedly, say. But yeah, but yeah. Do, do you see where I'm coming from? I'm not against... Look, I want to make it very clear. Do you I'm separate against, Project Veritas from James O'Keefe? Because I think you most want... of us trust James O'Keefe, but we don't trust Project Veritas. And well, I think it's no, important to delineate the You were the one the who was saying, well, not you, like, so many people were saying that you do trust Project Veritas. So this is my point. No, I don't trust Project confused. Veritas at all. I've followed James O'Keefe for 10 plus years, and I trust him. I, I, could, I so know why, that why did everyone absolutely sold. love Project Veritas's discovery? Why, why was everyone immediately genuinely believing Project Veritas? What, only because it was James, James O'Keefe who broke the story? I'm just yeah. trying to understand. No, I think it's because right. if okay. it comes out of James' mouth, he has a history of backing up what he says with facts. No, I've, 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 I've got, I've got to call forms. Cap on this. I've, I've, I've got to call Cap on this, right? Because five minutes ago, well, five seconds ago, Project Veritas and James O'Keefe weren't mutually exclusive. I mean, 
you know, I mean, if not, <laughs> who do you who did you d donate your money to? You donated your money to Project Veritas. Well, right? yeah, so to, to now say, wait, 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 hold company. up, bro. One second, bro. So to now say five minutes later that, hey, I never trusted Project Veritas. It was James O'Keefe. I trusted. Man, come on, bro. You you can admit when you drop the ball somewhere, bro. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Just, I mean, God damn. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Come, well, I think coming in here with that bullshit, man. <laughs> I think you stop, the cap. stop the cap. Yeah, no, I stop the cap. I didn't hear him say that. Stop the cap once again. I didn't hear him say that. I wasn't. I heard him say that he trusts James O'Keefe, and James O'Keefe is Project Veritas. That's what yeah. I heard him say. Yeah. Man, so it's it's like it's, 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 man Mary, Mary, don't stand, don't stand up for Eric, man. Eric is no, bullshit. That's exactly what I said. A no, no, Eric is bullshitting on his stage, man. Bullshit. One with the K. The one with the one with the K. One hundred percent. You can't trust the C's. Absolutely not. Um, but no, I, I want to reframe what I say so you can understand. Like, if because you'd understand this, Nelson, you're a big Grant Cardone fan, right? Grant Cardone is the the brand, the face of 10x, right? So if you ever wanted to take down 10x, you'd have to take out Grant, right? And you would know that it would be the only way in hell you'd have a chance at taking it down because he's somebody who is his brand, and you'd know that the second he got separated from it that he was no longer his company. That's most likely the theory would be is that he got outed and somebody turned against him, right? And so at that moment, you either trust the brand that threw out the person or you trust the guy who built the brand who originally earned your trust. Yeah, but right? Eric, and that's so, like, that's what you have to why choose. didn't he just break the story himself without the use of TV? Why, why, why even have it? So if he knows he's on his way out, why, why well, I didn't think he did. Upset. I didn't think he knew oh, okay. he was on his way out. I think the, somebody ousted him. I think it's exactly as he said. A board member called an emergency meeting and had enough sway to get him out. And up until that very moment, he had no idea, right? And I can just see that's very plausible because that's usually how it works, right? That's the only way you can break an organization like this because not many people own the face of their brand. And, and that's a very specific, you know, powerful person. So I wasn't <clears throat> trying to cap for it. It just was, you know, it's it, – if I was going to do it that way, it's how I would do it. You know, I would take out the guy who built it because the, the, the theory then you fall back on is the brand's big enough to survive and you can put new reporters in place and, and it doesn't really matter. You operate behind the brand and it no longer has a personal face. Um, so just a perspective, guys. I'm, I'm open to anything. So Absolutely. Absolutely. I appreciate you for that perspective, my brother. Um, let, let me pass the mic around. And by the way, guys, while I'm doing this, so we just put up our next space up top. You guys were in a space yesterday with the interview uh, with Robert O'Neill, the guy that killed Osama bin Laden. The next space has been announced, and we got another big interview. Crazy. So everybody grab your phones, scroll all the way to the link I just put up top for the next space. One, make sure you set your reminders. Number two, Make sure you retweet, because it's going to be absolutely crazy. You understand what I'm saying? So we're going to be interviewing Dr. Kirk Moore, right? And Dr. Kirk Moore, when you guys Google that name, you're going to see a bunch of news articles. That is the doctor from Utah that was indicted for selling fake COVID vaccines. Well, well not selling, using fake COVID vaccines on his patients, essentially putting saline in the tubes and saying that, you know, they jab him up with the vaccine and then giving him vaccine cards. So he's going to be live on Twitter spaces. We're going to be interviewing him and you guys definitely don't want to miss that night show. So make sure you go <laughs> ahead and set your reminders up top because that shit is going to be crazy. Yeah. I, I might get arrested that show. I might get arrested. One hundred percent. Oh, okay. I see you know all these, these people. Listen to me. I, I'm gonna get arrested that show because yeah, dude. Listen to me. First of all, he gave out a whole bunch of fake vaccine cards. Then he injected children. Uh, that uh, people that actually took their children there to get the real vaccine. He injected them with saline solution. This 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 was deliberate as hell. He's a plastic surgeon. He had he, he didn't have to do this shit. He, didn't, he wasn't required or authorized to do it. He's a plastic surgeon. He started out, and then he poured out. He's going to get all this vaccine, and he dumped it all down the drain. Yeah, man, he's indicted. He's going to go to prison. 
and uh, he is the he is the epitome of someone that needs to go to prison, okay, for deterrence. Because what he did was it was a crime. He he didn't have to go out there and get the vaccine. I mean, I mean, Jonathan, save it for tomorrow, bro. I mean, yeah, what, I am, what, I am, I am. God, I don't damn, hear bro. I, I mean, someone is, uh, someone is angry right now. I mean, I'm save the shit for tomorrow, bro. Before. Like, Jesus, get all excited, man. I mean, God damn. Okay. I just, <laughs> but once again, guys, once again, the link is up top to that space. Grab your phone, scroll all the way to the top of the page. Make sure you click that link. Set your reminders. Most importantly, retweet it because that space, once again, is going to be crazy. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Crazy. I might, I might, okay? I might so, help him fund his legal fees. Shit, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it, okay? So, but that being said, let, let, let's let's circle back to the conversation, man. Let's get down to the nitty gritty of the James O'Keefe situation. In the meantime, by the way, if you think Pfizer had something to do with James O'Keefe getting ousted from Project Veritas, hit that chat feature at the bottom right corner of your page and put hashtag Pfizer. Hashtag Pfizer. If you believe Pfizer had something to do with James O'Keefe getting kicked out of Project Veritas, and also, check this out, if you want a refund from Project Veritas, put a hashtag, want a refund. Chat feature, bottom right corner, let's go with the hashtags. I'm going to go to, um, let me go to Professor Etiquette. Professor Etiquette, what do you have to say about this, man? Let's talk about it. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Hey, I'm coming from actually 10X Integra Stores, Daytona Beach. Absolutely love Yay. it. Yay. All right. Yeah, thanks, Grant. It's beautiful. All right, so so a couple things. One is, I, you know, I only like to go with facts. But the reality is that actually the whole issue with Pfizer could be that the board members got scared because the fiduciary responsibility for a board member is a big deal. Okay, that's a big, big deal. So they probably were looking to do the right thing. But I really came up here to say that you may not have seen it on the feed, but, you know, I actually, so they're located in New York, the business, okay? And then they also have the business in Virginia. And as you know, all of that is public information with the Secretary of State. So I have listed and tagged you a grant on who the board members are. Uh, a few of them are actually on LinkedIn. You can start with the executive director, David, to see if you can get your uh, refund back that way. And that's really what I just came up here for. I, I don't, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I, I just strictly have a, you know, I've been in business for 40 years, and I just go for the facts. So there you go with what you need, and uh, all the links are on the Twitter feed. So thank you for having me up there, and I wish everyone a great night. Thank you for not being a mayor. Thank you for not being a mayor. Thank you for not being a mayor, man. I love me some mayor. E Jonathan, you got to stop coming after my girl, bro. Respect her. You understand what I'm saying? Can That's I just, a problem. You know, what, what, it doesn't even matter if it's $10. When it's a nonprofit, I, it's, if it's a hotel room, I've seen a hotel room take down the executive director. So it, there's no amount of money that should be spent if it's not spent on the actual uh, board, on the actual uh, nonprofit itself. So, Mary, Can you say it again for Mary? Because she didn't understand that. Mary, Mary doesn't well, understand that. Yeah, okay. All right, thanks, guys. Yeah, no, that's a different beast, man, when you start doing that. Uh, uh, Mary, do you want to tell Grant he don't know business? <laughs> I guess, uh, wait, Grant, with a nonprofit, if you start spending that money any kind of way that's the wrong way, that's your ass, right? Well, if it's not for the profit, if it's not for the intention of the organization, exactly. you know, which is whatever the purpose and mission of, of Project Veritas, I, I don't know what their mission was. Uh, so, Grant, do you get a tax? So, you get a tax break, I'm sure. And then, would the hundred and fifty thousand per year? You don't. You can't really write that off. Well, no, it's, it's, it's already it's already a non non taxable uh, entity. So the entity doesn't need it right. doesn't need tax write-offs because it doesn't have income. That's the other thing. It's under the 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 you know premise of it has income and expenses, which means it can virtually have a hundred percent of its income or donations are used for uh, the expansion of the mission, uh, mission or the accomplishment of the mission, whatever it is to help kids in need or or whatever their mission was. I don't know what it was. And so when he's spending 150000 on cars, which you guys say is nothing, 
that money that that money could have been redirected to because uh, he wasn't spending one hundred fifty thousand dollars on cars when they started. I guarantee you. The, 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 him, him, him driving up in a limo doesn't make uh, the story any better. You know what I'm saying? In their case, the, the, their, the, their, their project Veritas, I think Veritas means truth, revealing the truth or discovering the truth. Him riding in a limo is, is not going to uh, help him in discovering the truth. You make him more comfortable, make him feel like a big shot. Anyway, the biggest loss for him here is he had a Pulitzer Prize in his, in his fucking hands. Thousand percent. Thousand percent, Grant. Um, let me go to, I see we have Christy. Christy, welcome to the stage. Let's talk about it. Hey, guys. I know Jonathan's not going to like my opinion, but I'm here to stick up for Mary. And Probably not, but let's talk fine. about it. Fine. <laughs> That's fine. So I tried to get my husband to speak, He's but he's busy watching TV. So so he was on the board for a nonprofit, and they had a girl that was working for them, and she was kind of like managing their books and stuff like that. And she stole a ton of money from the company. And by the time they found out, they went to the police. It was probably $250,000. And they went to the police, and... Honestly, nothing ever came from it. So they fired her, which rightfully so. However, there was no, like, she never, the police said that they, even the banker, though, when they were looking through the accounts afterwards and found all this stuff, and they had all these crazy rules where it was like, well, did you tell her that, and this is for a lumber company, did you tell her she wasn't allowed to get dental work done with, the money or did you tell her was this in writing so I don't believe that you know yeah they fired her of course which you know but I don't think you would this was a patient an employee that was making eighty thousand dollars a year this was not their key driver for the business I just cannot see I agree with Mary I, I can't see them kicking her you know him to the curb for the fourteen thousand dollars or you know even if there was multiple fourteen thousand dollar transactions I just, I just don't see it. So that's all I had to say. Thanks for letting me speak. Hey, Christy, my question for you is: This is a nonprofit lumber company, right? It was a, it was a nonprofit foundation. Like they had a board of directors, and it was a, so it's for the the state basically, and so it's not a nonprofit lumber company. It was, it was a nonprofit. Um, like, what was the it was an association, so it was like a government association type thing. So they have to file their, you know, they have different lumber companies that file or that are part of them and, and paid to be part of them, and they have a lobbyist, and they all these sorts of things. And so, yeah, nothing ever happened okay. to her. So, so, so here's the deal, and thank you for coming up here and, and making my point for me, okay? Because what they did was they, they reported it to the police, just like they're going to report it to the police. They say they haven't done it the third party investigation that, that, that the report says something about that okay now when their books are reviewed okay and that money is missing all right they're, they're covered because they had a theft and they dealt with it they terminated the problem okay and that problem was terminated all right and, they, and they're dealing with it now the, the, and the reason they said well did you not t did you not tell them that they couldn't do this and do that because there, there, there really are some things written in there did she not know whatever but what I'm saying to you is they dealt with it. They reported it to the police. They terminated the person. These are the same steps Veritas has taken. They, you know, James O'Keefe were, were in the process of being removed. He left because he knew he was going to be removed. He knew he was gone. So right? did they file, he, he have they not, filed police reports? Like, is this a... One, one, wait, wait, one second. That, that's what they said. They, they, they haven't, they said they haven't done their investigation. They haven't completed their investigation. Is what the, the, their report said. Okay. So what I'm trying to tell you is this right here. No one knows better than James O'Keefe what Project Veritas is going to find. So, no, he didn't want to show up for no meeting. He didn't Have you guys invited him into this room? Uh, yeah, well, I'll, I'll wait to see. Wait oh, I'm, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure he's not. He's definitely yeah. not going to come. Oh, he won't come when I my, my, my ass here, my black ass here. He ain't going to come. 
But anyway, let me just say this right here. <laughs> no one knows better than and, and Grant. You can be and, and tell me if I'm wrong. No one knows better than James O'Keefe what Project Veritas is going to find out when they do a deep dive. Okay, so that's why he didn't want to show up for any meeting because he didn't want to go on record. He didn't want to put anything on record. Okay, so where he's locked in. That's why he didn't show up for any of those meetings. Okay, because once he goes on record, they're gonna say, well, for, according to these right here. They, they, they can determine the fact that he's being dishonest if he has to pivot later on once he realized, oh, they damn, they did find out about that. I didn't think they would find out about that. So no one knows better than James O'Keefe what Project Veritas is going to find when they do the deep dive in the book. And so you didn't make Mary's point. You made my point. So thank you for your very I much don't for agree. Life. I think I made Mary's point. Oh, Chris, 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 please, please jump in. Please jump in and, and just reiterate what you said because you know some jonathan is hard of hearing as but recently no, seriously you know so the person you know me, so one, <laughs> hold, now, now, one second. he said that the person that stole they fired and they reported it to the police okay that that, that those are along the lines where project veritas is going with james O'Keefe. okay and so so they, 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 they didn't say they didn't have the person. Go, right, because I'm saying there was a whole process. There's a whole process. You can't just, like, preemptively, like, where's all this information then? If it hasn't even been reported to the police, how are they already firing her, him? No, no, James O'Keefe, they told and they said we didn't want James O'Keefe to leave. They said that. We wanted to work with oh, him. Oh, we you know because so they they're, they're backtracking. They're backtracking because no, he they're, is they're their not dad. backtracking. No, they, what they're trying to do is they're trying to get all the information. They want him to go on record. James O'Keefe, wily as he is, he is smart, decided he's not going to go on record, okay? He's not going to show up at these meetings. They wanted to have a conversation with him. How okay? do you know this? Because that's what they told you? Like, that's, I mean, that's kind of an unfair thing In to fact, take because Jay, Jay, you read James, their James statement? James O'Keefe alluded he alluded to it in his thing when he said, oh, oh he alluded to it, so that means it's, no, I mean, that's, one that, I don't buy it. Ma'am, 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 ma ma their statement, their statement, plus James O'Keefe alluded and pretty much collaborated their statement when he said, I was getting on a plane and right before the plane door closed and I was supposed to be in Nashville, you know, once again. If they so were so sure with what that they were doing, why were they waiting until he was on a plane so he couldn't even respond? That, 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 and it see, was up see, in the so air. You're taking the, see, see, here's the thing. James O'Keefe, first of all, he can embellish, okay? This this organization has to document everything because when the litigation comes, they're going to want to be the ones that are getting sued. So James O'Keefe, the same guy that said he was in prison, you weren't here that day when he goes, I was in prison. I actually was here there. that day when he said that. I was on. I was okay. in this room, so I heard that conversation. Okay, so good. Okay, think you, exactly. so I think you took it out of context. No, we did not take I it out of context. You did. You did say I, was I in think prison. you did. No. Okay, well, once again, the same man that said he was in prison, okay? As a matter of fact, I didn't even ask. I, I thought, I was like, wow, damn, he got in prison? That, that, she, he really, as a matter of fact, Elena said, well, how long were you in prison for? I wanted to know how long you were in prison for because it sounded like, damn. And he goes, yeah, a couple of hours. <laughs> that that means he didn't even hit a jail cell. He was, he was took down in question. That he, he wasn't in prison. If no one can embellish about something like that, in fact, he got, he, that's when I knew he was a piece of shit because if you're that comfortable lying about something you don't have to lie about to a group of people that you don't have to lie to, what else are you doing? No, for three years he had to stay in his house. No, he did so he not. Was confined. He, yes, he was. He yes, said he, was he did. He didn't go to prison. He, he said. He, he was said. He said. In his house. Okay. He said. Okay. Can y'all show us where where it's proven? That's what he said. No. Okay. No, I, I'm done. Okay, you're right. You're right. Just because he said it, I mean, it's factual. I'm, well, I'm, you're I'm saying the same mind. about yeah, Project done. Veritas just because they say what they no, said. I, I, that I don't give a fact. I don't like Project Veritas. I don't like what. You know why? Because I think it's all BS. And here you guys are saying, okay, if Project Veritas is BS, then everything that Project Veritas has done before was BS. So are they BS now? Or are they just BS now? Or have they always been BS? How long the person, the new CFO that he fired, how long was he with the company? He, he just wasn't new. Started. He's been there for three years. No, he didn't. That was the CFO, the Chief Strategy Office. 
officer. There's a difference. F financial, financial officer. No, 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 no. It was the chief. There's one I just started for two months. Was the CSO, the chief strategic officer. The CSO has been there for about three years. Jonathan, you're talking out of both sides of your face. No, actually, it's the truth. Now, if you want to bet any money on it, I'll, I'll go well in the bet. Okay. I'm not talking about both sides. See, it doesn't see because now you're stuck because I gave you some facts and you weren't prepared for those facts. The, the one that he yeah, had. Yeah, you're, problem you're with right. Was, you got me. I know I'm right. I know I'm right. So, once again, I'm going to mute up, though. <laughs> Man, I can't get enough of Jonathan to argue with people, man. I love that shit. It's crazy. <laughs> I just sit back, get my popcorn, and listen. <laughs> Let me go to Sarah real quick. Sarah's good to see you back in the show. Let's Hi. talk about it. Well, thanks. Well, first of all, for a, an MPO, it's different than an association. An MPO has to use all their funds to go towards the directive, like Grant said. An association is different. They aren't a tax-free shelter, like an MPO. Um, and it is standard practice for any board of directors when they find any sort of malfeasance to first ask the person, such as it's a CEO, to step down. If they won't, for any reason, they're fired. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, let's... And um, rightfully so, and rightfully so. matter if the board makes the decision and the board has every right to fire whomever they choose by the way somebody just posted me a cbs news link 2010 in regards to james o'keefe's arrest and it says here that o'keefe pleaded guilty and was sentenced to three years of probation not house arrest probation a probation fine of fifteen hundred dollars <laughs> That, that, very different than service. house arrest. Very different. Very different. Very different. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think Jonathan was right on that one. Somebody just sent me the link right now. To say, to Wait. What, for what? What did he get arrested for? Um. So th this is in regards to the arrest in 2010 that he was speaking about before. Somebody just sent me the link from CBS News. You guys should actually just Google it. James O'Keefe, CBS News arrest 2010 should pop up right there. But um, let me go to uh, Patrick. Patrick, what's going on, man? Welcome to the night show. Let's talk about what's it. What's going on, guys? I a lot of Jeez. a lot of mind do, reading. Do, in, do, uh, doing better than James O'Keefe, man. Let's I go. Mean, a lot of mind reading and uh, projection here. My understanding was I just on that one point. Uh, my understanding again, I don't, I don't have all the uh, the data here in front of me, but he was wearing an ankle bracelet during that to get a drug test, you know, randomly at any given time. So. I don't know what you wanted to find as house or house arrest or what the judge's terms were, but I believe those details matter. As far as what uh, I've read into all of this, you know, James O'Keefe, he slammed his winky in the door, right? When he he, he apparently was ball busting uh, O'Hara, the CFO, right? Uh, over, you know, he mentioned that in his video. He was ball busting him over the, um, the, the, the way that he was fundraising, right? And the guy was getting on him, and they, they got into a spat. And apparently he overreacted, and he probably said some things he shouldn't have said in front of people that he shouldn't have said it, okay? And so my take is that O'Hara cornered HR and marched all those people into the boardroom to, to hang the guy. Because, you know, the guy's – this O'Hara guy probably – he's probably a prince, right? This guy has probably has an ego, right? He doesn't want, you know, James O'Keefe walking over him. And so he, he – he, he, he tried to take, throw the bus at O'Keefe for whatever reason, right? And he pushed the board members, board members' asses against the wall. What can they do? They're stuck, right? So then my take is, look, you know, the board of directors, they flub their response. Um, everyone's hands are tied. Then they have little control over the public narrative, right? It's going to take its own narrative on Twitter based on the leaks and just little bits of information. O'Keefe is pushing his own, right, as he should, right? Uh, whether you know whether it's true or not, it's hard to tell. But you know, I, I think he mugs their reputation either way. I think he wins. I think he has most of the cards here, to be brutally honest. Because without him, the organization's done. They're toast. Right? The donors are pissed. There's a lot of people pissed off. And it's a cesspool. So you know, at this point, I think it's who blinks first. And it's anyone's guess what happened. Right? I, I'm not going to bet either way. But anyways, that's my take. 
Yeah, absolutely, moral, moral absolutely. Can I, Nelson? Is don't, don't close your winky in the door. Winky in the door. Okay. <laughs> Jump in, Christy. Oh, was that Sarah? Absolutely. Yeah, I just, I, do you remember when you did a space when they were talking about when it was just rumored that he may be ousted? I do have a question for Jonathan, so I hope he unmutes. Jonathan, in that space, you said that you thought, I think you got into it with Graham. You thought that it was a tactic for fundraising. Do you still believe that? No, no, I don't. Obviously, it's not. I because it's just it, the, him being ousted so shortly after didn't make any sense. Yeah, I mean, Sarah, when you think about it, right? Him being ousted, uh, I oh, mean, I didn't think it that was, kills. I didn't think it was, but but Jonathan thought that it was going to be just a you know a big fundraising. Um, scheme that they were trying to pull off and then they actually ousted him so I was wondering what his take off yeah, was yeah, on Sarah, that I'll, I'll be honest with you I really because I couldn't imagine them thank you thank you for off. reminding us of the stupidity no no no, no, uh, no because no, no, Jonathan no, no. Jonathan I couldn't talk you off that ledge that night I couldn't talk you off you actually had me thinking oh wow dude that would be yeah. no, he's, he's doing great. that this dude is deep deep uh, manipulative, but 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 thank you for admitting that. Now you know that that was just no, yeah, you, step, yeah. you stepping on your wanker. No, that that was that was. And see, unlike people here, I can admit that because he, 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 every once in a while you admit you still haven't come around on the vaccine. Were you wrong about the vaccine? No, absolutely, I wasn't. I was not. You still hold them true on that. One. <laughs> so so what what I, what Grant? Reason I said that was it just didn't the timing of it all didn't make sense because here's the deal: they knew what was going on. They, they knew, you don't just say, okay, three days later or whatever, like, oh, let's go out, let, you know, we found this information. This was brewing. He knew what was going on. He was sitting there, you know, like he was waiting waiting to get a, a, a shot, you know, like like a kid waiting to get a needle. His stomach, I know that night in that room when he was being all boisterous and, you know, boisterous and everything else, you know, he, he knew he had to have known what was going on, you know. You just don't get hit with that all of a sudden, you know. And, and so that's why I just said, wait a minute, this can't be, because why would they even go go through with the fundraising? Why would they do everything that they're doing? It just doesn't make sense. The timing of it all was just bad, you know, and uh, it just didn't make sense, you know. And so, and even now, when you look at it, I mean, did they even did they knew? Did they did it was was it like, hey, let's just get get this information out, this video out, this Pfizer video, while while you're here, while he's here? I, I don't know. It was crazy. You just don't get rid of someone like that after your biggest story ever dropped. You know? So, um, well, Jonathan, well, I, have, I... I have a question, Jonathan. So all the times that he's he's been sued for, like, liability or whatever it is for, you know, he, he has he ever lost? Because it looks like he's pretty good when it comes to the facts. Yeah, he has lost. When? Uh, I gotta go get it. I gotta get it. We 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 had this discussion about okay. a week weeks ago. I gotta go okay. pull this stuff up. We had that. Yeah, I let me know. Uh, yeah. So, uh, but no, he has. So, uh, but um, no, I'll, I'll I'll pull that up because we had this uh, in the space about two weeks ago. So why then, though? But then, why though? If they yeah. if they thought that he was um, embezzling money or if he was misusing funds, why were why did he have text messages about them offering other journalists more money or giving them a raise if they ousted O'Keefe? Like, if they had all this info that he was embezzling funds, why would they, they would just fire him? Let, let me get this straight. Did, did he tweet that out? He no, has pictures, he has pictures of it, of text messages. He has I pictures mean, of text w w messages. W how do you know that? Did he tweet that he had pictures of text messages? He showed him on the speech that he gave, but I guess just the same. Oh, he showed them on a speech that he gave. Well, just like just like what you believe about the vaccine or about anything, it's it's all hearsay, right? So I'm just yeah. So he's saying that the board lit is literally colluding to get him out of Project Veritas. Is is that the message that you received from that video? Yes. That's the message I took from it. They were offering other journalists a raise if they were going, if they were able to oust O'Keefe. So if they had information, 
on him embezzling money, misusing funds. Why would they have to do that? Just fire the guy. Man, this is crazy at the detriment of their organization. Yeah, I mean, listen, the more I'm hearing, the more we're talking about this, the more I'm leading towards, you know, Maze's point from earlier. You know, even though I hate her conspiracy shit, you know, I mean, it, it, this this, this kind of holds some water, man. I mean, because here's the deal. Once again, biggest story of the, the history of that organization. I mean, this was going to bring a plethora of, you know, donations to the organization, right? Especially this year, 2023 and beyond. They were going to raise a shit ton more money than they've ever raised in their history. I mean, for these guys to raise $20 million last year off of whatever content they had, in comparison with the Pfizer content, I mean, these guys were set to raise a significant amount of money. So to give that all up, to give that all up by ousting James O'Keefe so publicly, there's got to be a bigger reward coming from somewhere else. There has to be a bigger reward coming from somewhere else. I mean, you just don't do shit like that, right, <laughs> in the middle of something this big. So, you know, the, the, the more I'm hearing it, the more I'm leaning towards Maze's, you know, Maze's perspective here, man. And, and you know, if you guys in the audience are, if, if you're doing the same at this point, I want you to put it in the chat right now that you believe that they're getting paid. They're getting paid to get James O'Keefe out of here. So if you believe that, put it in the chat right now. Bottom right corner. Veritas board is definitely getting paid. Bottom right corner, put it in there right now. Um, but that being said, let me go to um, let me go to Lindsay. Lindsay, let's go. I just gotta say, you see how I went from conspiracy theory to perspective? Do y'all see that? Man, you you, you, <laughs> still, you still borderline conspiracy ninety nine point nine percent of the goddamn time, man. This happens to be point zero one. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Lizzie, let's talk about it. But, but, but money from where? Money from oh, where? I mean, I just think. JC, wait, wait, one, one, one second, Lizzie. I mean, JC, JC, I, I mean, again, possibility, right? We're not sure. I mean, dude, Pfizer's a tri freaking. Yeah, big okay, but you say Pfizer becomes uh, Project Veritas' new biggest donor through other channels. I'm 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 not even sure if it's if, if we're talking. We can, we can give you guys. We can make you a major media organization, and we send you 25 million a month. That is possible, or another possibility. Uh, because there there are notes in there about. It. I'm glad you got your way. He is talking to one of the other people there. But why Absolutely. would those guys? Why would those guys come to that meeting? They don't have to be at that meeting. You know. And then why is why is why is Veritas so quiet? JC, hey, you're, sound, you're sounding mad muffled right now, Brad. We can't really hear you. How, how about that? Is that better? Oh, perfect. perfect. Cause, cause I, I, yeah, so how, how uh, why has Project Veritas been so quiet today? Why aren't they in here? Ding, ding, ding. So it seems like this would be a great opportunity to say, hey, we got our story. We're funding it. We did the right thing by getting rid of James. He was toxic. We're bringing the biggest story to the world. We wanted to clear that up, get him off the line. And please, please send money to if you love what we're doing, bah, bah, bah. But they're not here. 100%. 100%. And, you, you, you know, you know, Grant, Sarah, Sarah, you want to jump? All right, go, go ahead. Jump I, in. Yeah, thanks. Hey, Grant, can, are you still there? Yes, I'm here. Yeah, he's, like he, he, he can hear. He can hear. Okay, um, Grant, do you expect to get any money that you donated back, or I expect to get it all you back. Just expect it. Now it's gone. No, I expect to get it all back. Do you think you will? Well, it's not up to him. It's up to them, and I think I, I think 100% I will, and I'll do my best to get everybody else's money back for them that donated that night, or I will sue the fuck out of Veritas. Do you know how much was um, how much was made during that fundraiser? Twenty six thousand. Twenty six thousand. Yeah, and if he would have okay. shut up, if he'd have quit collecting the entire time, we'd have raised more than that. How can you raise money when a guy's bragging about raising twenty six million last year? 
every time I wanted to raise money, he wanted to talk about how much money he raised. And I'm like, dang, <laughs> why should anybody yeah. give you money if you already got 26? It was so well, foolish, by the way. It, it's so man. foolish. He, it was so arrogant. When you're raising money for any charity, okay, I've raised money for the Boys and Girls Club, ro- uh, 5,000 role models, um, the, the what's the miracle, the, the kids, the uh, kids. Children's Miracle We Network. raised more money in one night for the for the Children's Miracle Network that's ever been raised. We did another one for the Kid Wish program, whatever, Make a Wish. Make you a don't wish. tell people while you're raising money how much money you raised. Well, you don't, you don't act like you don't need it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You talk about what you're doing with the money. You know, and why it's important. But, but I couldn't get him to shut up. And I would tell him right here, right now, if he was willing to listen to it. And because he's going to have to learn it on his next venture. I don't feel like they'll give any money back. Oh, I, I, I'll, I'll tell you as soon as we get it back, if when I got it back. Okay, because once they set a precedent with me, they'll do it with everybody. The right, and thing, then the right, it'll, it'll, it'll cost them more. It'll, much? it'll cost them more not to give it back than it will to give it back. And then what? Because now their ability to fundraise is down the toilet. Well, not, if they, not if they came in here tonight and, and told everybody, hey, this is the new Project Veritas. And this is why we did what we did. But there's probably no leader there because James was such an alpha dog. There's probably nobody there with enough confidence to stand up and be the spokesman because you guys said it earlier, he did everything. He was the engine, the transmission, and the rear end. He was everything but the limo driver. Thousand percent. Thousand well, I hope percent. the cars were worth it. <laughs> I'm saying <laughs> one thousand percent. I definitely agree with Grant. Um, let me go to Lindsay. Lindsay, you've been trying to speak for a while. Jump in. Oh, just I just feel Okay, it. let's go to somebody else. Um I mean, <laughs> wait, I wasn't done. <laughs> I mean, we can't hear you, goddamn. You can't hear me. You know what I'm saying? Oh no. No, your signal's cutting in All and right, out. I'll come back. Okay, let's go to um, let's go to G in N Y. Let's go. How how much money Quick did question. we raise for, the, for the, John uh, Nelson? How much money did we raised for that young uh, family? Uh, the 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 young Shanquilla. black family. Shanquilla. Shanquilla Robinson. Almost yeah. 150 grand in okay. an hour and a half. Yeah, and and James wasn't in the room. So I didn't yep. know the I didn't know uh, Miss Ch- Chanel. I, I I don't know her. I didn't know her family. I never met her. Nothing to do with her. Uh, we were talking about that tragedy. Where did that happen? Down in Cabo or something? Uh, I, I think I think I think Cabo. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think Cabo. If you guys remember that story, and we we were doing a room, somebody was doing a room talking about the tragedy and everything, and I said, Hey guys, let's raise some money for this for his, their family. So they can, you know, find out what happened to their kid. Now I don't know these people. I have zero data on on the whole thing. I don't know exactly what happened. We we raised one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in less than an hour, maybe ninety minutes, right? About about ninety minutes, absolutely. Because because it was hey, we, everybody here wanted to help somebody. Okay, what did James raise? Me me and James together raised sixteen thousand dollars. Because he couldn't couldn't quit talking about how great he was, and and maybe that was the problem. I'm just telling you guys, just my perspective dealing with this guy a couple of times. And again, if he was in the room, I'd say it right now, dude, dude, like you got to check yourself. You're 35 years old. I've got 30 years on you. 30 years, I've been playing this game. Okay, you got a great story. Let me help you raise money for this great story in Project Veritas. And what Jonathan said earlier about. They had to know. There's no way he knew that night he was being ousted. Why would he come to the room, Jonathan? No reason. Why? He, why knew. he, 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 he knew. We got probably fair talks on stage right now, Grant. They're, they're here. Okay, good. So, guys, hey, guys. No, what? that's a fa- that's a fake account. That's, that's not a fake Project account. Veritas. That's a fake. Yeah, but if it is, if it, you guys are here at Project Veritas, this is Grant Cardone. Please reach out to me. I, I want to help you guys. I like the work you're doing, but I'm like many of your followers and, and, and people that like the work you're doing. I, I'm curious. 
I have a big voice, but, you know, a fairly large platform, and I'd love to help you guys going forward, but I don't understand. And if I don't understand it, I'm going to tell people. I stood up here and told people, I'm going to help. And the people that believe in me helped. And that's not good for me. I don't, I don't have failing programs. So, so a week later, you guys are firing the fucking C CEO? Thousand percent. Not Thousand cool. percent. So yeah, I got so a I question did. for yeah. Green. Let's talk about it. If the cars were used for work, you know, his project, is that still an issue? Uh, and also, I don't, I don't know that it's just the cars, by the way. I think there's – I haven't read all the stuff it is. I don't think it's about whether it was a car or not. If there was, if they considered it excess expenditures for the sake of James, that could not in any way, shape, or form benefit Project Veritas, then it's going to be he's going to be guilty of uh, misappropriation of funds. Did you look at the 990s, Grant, and look at the routers? No. So, do, so Grant, probably do that. Also, how come the narrative just seemed to? I don't know. I remember being in a space, and I don't know if you guys were in it, um, where a former employee, you know, talked about working there and that, you know, the high turnover rate was because you really don't have a life when working for Project Veritas, and that's why she moved on. And, you know, that it's tough being him and in the position. And listen, I'm a type A personality. I'm a perfectionist. I know I want something done. I'm a horrible delegator. But if I do, I ain't easy. So I can't even imagine what it was like to be on his level, especially, you know, what, what they're dealing with, trying to uncover the things that we don't know about, which we need to know about. But with all that being said, again, you know, you were raising the money, and I agree 100%. You don't pump your chest while someone's trying to make money for you and talk about how much you raised, $26 million, trying to get more money. People are struggling. They ain't giving you $5 of what they got in their pocket that they can maybe afford if you're bragging about $26 million. That's just, that's a no-brainer. But for some reason, I don't think he knew what was going on, but the board definitely had to know what was going on. And, if, and, and I still would stand by my conviction. They were out for him, and they knew it. And I believe they got paid, and it, it's no hundred thousand or whatever. They got big money from Big Pharma. There's a reason why they're called big money. And maybe, just maybe, call me a conspiracy theorist because I like to run with names. Conspiracy theorist. <laughs> maybe some of the other pharma pharmaceutical companies didn't want to get, you know, busted in on next, and they threw in the pot too. And I'll leave it there. Thank you. Man, I love her accent, man. She's a New Yorker. New Yorker. And love you know it. what? Now, that's, that's so crazy. When she started talking, I like, she's from the area. And I looked down and had it right in there in her name. I was like, holy shit, okay. Well, absolutely. <laughs> 100%, man. 100%. Let's have I mean, <laughs> I mean li li listen, man. James O'Keefe, Project Veritas, man. This, this is a crazy situation. Once again, this is, this is an absolutely crazy situation. Came across as a shocker for most. Um, you know, pretty sure even Jonathan Bing, you know, saw this as, you know, just just a, a what the f situation, right? So, I, I I really I really do hope that um, you know, because here's the deal, man. There really hasn't been a media platform like Project Veritas ever, really and truly, right? The stuff they did on Pfizer. No other media platform or organization would ever put something like that together, right? So, you know, I, I, I really don't want this to be the downfall of this organization, right? But it seems like this organization is crumbling from the inside, right? It seems like the snakes are already embedded inside, and they're taking this whole goddamn ship down from the inside. And it's sad to see, man. It's sad to see because the likes of Fox News, CNN, MSNBC, these guys are laughing their asses off right now. Laughing their asses off at this situation right now. 
And, you know, it's, it's, it's unfortunate. Somebody just tagged me. Somebody just mentioned me um, a live Twitter follower count for the Project Veritas account. And their numbers are literally going down and down and down. People are literally unfollowing that profile by the minute here on Twitter. Right? So it's, it, it really is sad to see, especially after the past couple weeks, the way they blew this situation with Pfizer up. I, I, I really do hope that they figure this thing out, man. But it, it, it may be way past the point of return at this very time. But um, that being said, guys, welcome to the night show. You're live in the night show on Twitter Spaces with Nelson and Pega, Grant Cardone, Jonathan Bing. And, you know, of course, we're talking about it, man. Hot topics on a nightly basis, just breaking it down, having a conversation as regular people, regular folk, and just, just, just really talking about it. So, once again, if you're not following us, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you're doing so right now. Make sure you have your notifications on right now, because once again, we do this on a nightly basis here on Twitter Spaces. And if you missed the show yesterday, definitely go back and play those replays. We had the guy who killed Osama bin Laden. That was probably my favorite, the best show I've ever done on Twitter Spaces. And, you know, I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys love that as well. So go check it out in the replays. And the next show, look up top. Scroll all the way to the top of the page. Hit that link right now. Big, big, big interview. Dr. Kirk Moore indicted for using fake COVID vaccines on his patients. They were filled with saline, and now he's got indicted. We have him live here on Twitter Spaces, so make sure you tap in. Hit that link up top at the at the top of my head in Grants, Jonathan's. Make sure you RSVP. Make sure you retweet that space, because it's going to be absolutely insane. But that being said, let's get back to this Veritas situation. Let's get back to this James O'Keefe situation. And let's hear from our resident conspiracy theorists. Maze, you have the floor. Thank you. Okay, so my concern is that the story doesn't get lost. And, and that's what's important. If it does, if the story just disappears and nothing happens, then I am inclined to believe my conspiracy theory is true. I'm going to still investigate. But, you know, that could change... That's a game changer. I mean, with with the I don't know. I just feel like it's already lost steam. They're not talking about it anymore. There's it's not. No one's taking it as a case. It's not being investigated. It seems like it was quieted, which is pretty suspicious. Along with the whole ordeal. But considering it all just happened, maybe they didn't have time, like the whatever's left of Project Veritas without James O'Keefe. But I am curious to see if they will continue with that despite him not being there. What do you guys think? That's the that's the important part. I mean, they're going to try. They're definitely going to try. But are the people going to gravitate to it? It's a completely different thing. I, I think I think uh, they need to get uh, to re-strategize, start getting some money from the left, and, and, and start doing some real news instead of uh, stuff that's been happening. Now, I'm going to tell you something. The, pro the Project Veritas' biggest problem is they so they align themselves with the right. Now, Bruh. the right, what, one second, the right, on the people on the right, what you guys typically do is put the per the pick the person over the mission, the party, the company, or whatever. Okay, and you guys believe that without that person, that that party, that that company, that whatever is is no longer worthy. Okay, you guys, and, and that and that right there is a, a fatal flaw of the right. Sort of like with Trump. You know, you guys put Trump over the country, over the party, over everything. So I think, uh, will Project Veritas survive? No, because they're so closely aligned with the right. And, and what the right is doing right now is what they did typically do. They cannibalize their own. And the, the cannibalization of that, that whole organization has begun. You know, we got people like Grant Cardone asking for his money back, you know. And you know, and me, I'm an opportunist, so I'm gonna ask for mine back as well. You know, because if Grant asks for his back, I'm asking mine back. So you know, once again, uh, it, it's just the right being the right. So absolutely, no, it does not stand a chance of succeeding. You know what I've learned, Jonathan, since I've been on this app? <laughs> I learned that most conspiracy theorists 
are Republicans. And then I had to think about that for a while. Like, why? Why is it that Democrats don't entertain the conspiracy theories? In fact, I feel like Tira's, like, you know, uh, hobby in life is to debunk conspiracies. And it started to make sense after the Twitter files. It's because the Democrats are all about the government. The government is all about the conspiracy. So, I, it, you know, it's like now it makes sense. You know, you guys, since you're a part of it, you always have, not you, but you know what I'm saying? But isn't that interesting? <laughs> I mean, I just thought it was interesting. I wanted to share. But um, I always wondered why everybody's so quick. Democrats were so quick to debunk um, all conspiracies. And it's just because they're all about government. Government's the ones doing them. It all makes sense. Because we believe in facts. In facts. That's, right. that's, that's exactly <laughs> what it is. See, it, 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 we, it, uh, being a realist is harder than a conspiracy because if someone comes in and make up a conspiracy, you don't need any proof or evidence to jump on and say, oh, yeah, that sounds good, and you jump right on and you can roll with it, okay? But when someone says, show me proof, you know, and you don't have proof, you know, see, me, my, our standards, my standards are a little higher. I, I, I don't, if it, it won't be a conspiracy. If you tell me something, I'm like, okay, my mind's open. All right, show me some evidence. And if you're able to do that, then you, I'm going to rock with you. But if you just tell me like no, and then because you got you know you got Sally and you got Jimmy and you got Bobby over here saying the same thing, that I should say the same thing? No, absolutely not. That, 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 look how many people in the Jonestown believe in that shit. Okay, I'm not a follower, you know. And so that's all it is. Um, the 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 right, you like I said, you got to cannibalize your own. You got to call Ryan own, you know, Republican name own. All this other stuff. You guys make people feel bad for not being a hundred percent of what you are. If someone says, "Hey, I'm 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 right there with you, but I just can't quite get there," but I support you, you're like, "No, you don't support me. You're dead to me." That's how you guys do it. And you don't feel bad, Jonathan. Thing. You don't feel bad though. <laughs> that's, that's not how we do it, Jonathan. You know, I just want to say one thing. If those that are not familiar with uh, Project Veritas, also known as Jace, James O'Keefe, then you don't know how the how the whole thing is gonna evolve. I mean, this guy is more than likely going to come up with some crazy stuff, take his organization back. And so this is why I'm not even, you know, uh, just worried about it. I mean, James knows what he's doing. He's been doing it for a long time. I have yet to see him fail in anything, whether you like him, whether you're, you know, excited about him so or not. So I'm rooting for James, and I hope he takes this organization back. Well, once you're ousted by the board, in order to come back would take – well, an act of the board, and I just don't see that happening, Carolyn. Well, they're losing followers. They're losing money. I, uh, I mean, Grant is getting his money back. Jonathan Bing is getting his money back. Everybody's getting their money back. So, I mean, that's why I never donated. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't don't expect donate. you to. <laughs> I didn't. No, absolutely. But what I'm trying to say here is, you know, give give the guy a little bit of credit. I mean, he knows how to fight, and he's going to fight for what's his. And, and Project Verita is James O'Keefe. You know what, Carolina? Yeah. Right, but as an individual, if, if he if he took funds, like, this is the thing. I just posted the 990s, and they haven't filed 990s for three years. And they're organized as a charity that makes under 50000 So they're already organized incorrectly. Like, there's some serious fines for that kind of stuff. Like, and not to mention, if he did personally purchase the vehicles, like, he had a $250,000 a year salary, but they're set up as a entity that makes only 50000 a year. Like, that's that's fraud. Like, and on top of that, you know, the FBI did come into their place. I love, I love Project Veritas. I was going to get into it, but I, I just looked into this, and it just seems like, and again, to the conspiracy theory thing, I'm probably the most liberal person in the room, but there's always a little bit of truth to it. You just follow the money. You know, it's, I don't think it has to be a big conspiracy all the time. It can be, and it is a lot, but I think people, you know, you get a lot of money, you get things happening. It's easy, I think, to, to get drunk with greed. And James definitely is a, a, a kind of a P.T. Barnum type, you know? He's easy to fall into that. It's easy. But if anybody in this room is going to have to sue him, you're going to have to sue him personally, and you're going to have to sue that company because I promise you it's an asset list entity based on what I just looked at. So. thousand percent. Let me go to Storm. Storm, make it rain on us, man. Let's talk about it. Yeah, you know, as much as I would love to see people, you know, sue to get their money back, this is a guy who has a a – a reputation of being sued and yeah Jonathan maybe he's lost maybe once or twice but he doesn't have a habitual habit of losing so 
he's probably pretty smart in the fact that he's going to be able to get around stuff and he's going to be squirrely. Um, you know, a lot of us hurt him. And so I, I, know, I know you don't believe in the legitimacy of what he's doing or what he's saying. So here's where my heart breaks, right? I'm still thinking that they're one and the same. And I don't care what anybody says, but they have to be one and the same because if he leaves, just like you're saying, his following goes down. Or uh, Pro- Project Veritas is absolutely just melting down. He's, he could start up something else and start it from the ground up and bootstrap it again, and his name will carry him all the way back up. So I don't understand. It's like a bouncing ball, right? You hit that hard enough on the ground, it's going to bounce a little bit higher. And I think that he's got that momentum right now because this is a campaign smear against him. That's what he's claiming. And the company is saying that he had wrongdoing, but yet you're not seeing the company getting out in front of it, especially on a place like Twitter. And if, if that's the case, it, it might be too early or it might be in real time. There's so many more distractions that we have to think about right now going on in the world. But, man, if you're a smart company, you would do it. He's a smart guy. I know he's plotting and planning something. You're going to see him pop up like a whack-a-mole, and I think he's going to be even bigger and better than what he normally was at Project Veritas. So just be careful on that. You try and go after him, you might waste a lot of time and money trying to get your own money back. So I'm, I'm curious, I'm, I'm curious to see. You, you know, J- J- John, did you, one thing I'm curious to see is with him leaving, who else is going to leave with him? Because that's a big thing. That's a big factor is going to determine if he's, you know, I mean, his success after after this termination, right? If a bunch of his staff, and most importantly, the whistleblowers leave with him, 100% he can set something up and get back on top. Absolutely. Nothing. Right? But, but that's a big question mark, right, Jonathan? Yeah, but what I was going to tell you, Nelson, is I, I, I guarantee you this, and if you guys want to play, anybody want to place any bets, if he, when he does start his next company up, it's going to be a for-profit company, all right? Because 100%. It's, it's going to be a for-profit company because he knows that he got screwed, okay, trying to get slick with that non-profit shit, okay? Uh, because on a for-profit company, he wouldn't have to worry about this. He wouldn't even have to have gotten the board. So that's all I got to say. Uh, so I, I, And that, that will tell you just how much he's learned from this. And I yell. Jonathan, 100%. if you really want your money back, do you think you're going to get it? Well, me? Yeah. Man, I'm gonna, if I can get a pair of shoes or something, man, absolutely. A, a G? Absolutely. I'll, I'll, actually, I'll get it back. You wear a $1,000 shoe? Like the Balenciagas he lost? Damn. Oh, yeah, yeah, I did lose it. I still haven't found those. I still haven't <laughs> if, if, it, his, if his company was filed as 50000 per year, isn't that then on the CEFO, or am I wrong? I, I don't know. That's what I was getting at. It makes no sense. Look, it's not James O'Keefe who was the problem. It was the CFO. And you know what? If he that's was not on the CFO, him, that's, that's, that's on legal. That's, that's not on the CFO. But who really is it on about. then? Where's the accounting fraud? Where's the accounting issue? I don't that, that, that has nothing to do with accounting. You, 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 <laughs> here's the thing. They're, they're claiming that he has hundreds, hundreds of transactions that are, quote, embezzlement or inappropriate. And if you get a CFO that is allowing this to happen, I'm sorry. He can't sneak that through a CFO. If, you, if you're on top of a 501c3, something's not adding up, Nelson. It just doesn't pass the smell test. That's all I have to say. And anybody else who runs a business, I know that my accountant – is on top of the things that I have to give them. Otherwise, they're the ones who are held accountable. All 